Hi, welcome to the 8th Net That Hall Compass show of the 21-22 season. I'm joined by my regular co-host and fellow fantasy football hub writer, Hibbo. How are you, buddy? Not too bad. Um, decent enough game week, 75 points minus four. So I think like a net 71, happy enough. I'm in a bit of a green arrow. I think I was up to about 72k or something like that. Not as good as you. No, it's been a good week. I was 74 points, but I did drop from a 5.1k to 6.1 on the auto subs that are going to be coming on for Calvert-Lewin. And I'm sure when we speak to our guest today, he'll have his say on uh, Calvert-Lewin as well. Definitely, definitely. So look, on this very special episode, we're joined by, he's a bit of a legend in the kind of fantasy Premier League FPL circles, four-time top 1K finisher. He's a man who courts up at a controversy. It's Nick Triggerlip. So welcome, Nick. Hi there, guys. Morning, peeps, as they say. Uh, so <laughs> got my glasses on. It's good timing. Nice to have you on the show with us, Nick. Um, what time is it just to timestamp it for the podcast listeners? I was just going half seven in the morning, but I've been up since 2 a.m., so I'm all ready now. Been for a run and uh, out and about. Ready to go. Uh, uh, See all the latest news. Hopefully, I was going to say um, what happened to Mariner a few episodes ago won't happen to you, where he was laughing so loud that his wife came in to tell him to shut up in the middle of the street. I'll send you the clip after. I wouldn't be surprised if something like that happens. He's already grumpy at me doing this. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice one. All right. So just let's get a bit of housekeeping, I guess, out of the way first, Hibbo, before we um, go straight into the interview. So. We just want to give the mini league a shout out one last time for any of the podcast listeners. The code is FG1XMB. And um, as we've said, we've got the prizes sorted now. So there's a first place football shirt. Second place, there's a copy of FPL Obsessed by Matt Whelan. And third place, there's a premium membership at Fantasy Football Fix. So I guess I'm just going to put up on my screen quickly, Nick, a little bit of your history because I think um, your rank history is it's kind of safe to say that you have a very good record. See, that, that is the look of a man who doesn't want to give away what his thinking is. But um, I'm going to put your record on the screen. And uh-huh. we, right, I know we have kind of four top 1K finishes, is it? And um, 35th is the one that really calls. There is a 434. There's 592. 776. So these are all quite high bars. And, you know, most people's measure of success is top 10K. So, you know, like... What happens? Like, what is it at that elite level that you can get a top 100 or a top 1,000? Like, what's your want of advice to do it? Because you've done it four times, right? So if anyone knows, it must be you. Yeah, well, it's um, pretty incredible. It was like five years of just like top finishes in a row, wouldn't it? And um, I don't think anyone's ever done that before in terms of like a block of five years. I don't think anyone would do it again because it's so much harder now but um basically i was just playing 1700 by the way so for anyone listening um who can't see the screen on the podcast version from is it 2010 all the way through yeah about then 2000 to 215 yeah five years and the lowest rank is 1700 for the podcast listeners i was a bit gutted with that one it was a bit of a (laughs) bit of a bad bad year (laughs) <laughs> what an incredible uh, kind of <laughs> reference point to be able to talk to you about tonight. And I guess your rank since then has not obviously been bad. It's still pretty good. Um, you have the top kind of 1% in there and less than that generally. But I guess compared to those years, and we'll come to this later on, it will be interesting to know like how you keep yourself motivated having hit those kind of numbers. Because it must be really difficult knowing, as you say, that no one could probably do that again over a five-year spell. I'm still, I was looking yesterday because I knew I was coming on here. So I went and found my old blog. It was like done live during that season where I finished about 500 and it like recorded all my thoughts of an entire season. So I went back and looked at that to try and see what I did differently then to um, what I do differently now, you know, and why, what's changed. And to be honest, I didn't find anything has changed at all. I think it's, I don't think I've changed at all in the way that I play. But things around me have changed, you know. It's um, I think there were four main things that have changed in the, since about 2015. And uh, the first first thing I think's changed is the sheer numbers of people. You know, it makes it harder, doesn't it? And uh, 
the in, informa information explosion as well. You know, everybody plays it, knows how to play the game now. I mean, I remember back then, like we used to hang around on Fantasy Scout all the time. And mm -hmm. like, it's probably quite a small subscriber base. I don't know how many subscribers they had, maybe 10, 20,000 or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the people playing FPL had next to nothing. You know, there was yeah. nothing on the official site or anything. So you just had a huge advantage. Yeah. yeah, huge advantage over everybody else. So that um, just by joining Scout, it kind of guaranteed you like a top 10K finish almost. You know, you could just almost walk into a top 10K just by looking at the stats and uh, playing sensibly, you know. Whereas now, I'd say you do that and you're probably looking at 100K, aren't you, as kind of a baseline, you know, very, very about. And, um, you know, what separate... I also had a look at the captains as well. I've had three or four years of below average captain scores in the last few seasons. So I think I've had a bit of bad luck recently. And uh, the seasons I did well, I was kind of doing better with the captains etc but um and that's the other really thing that's so just on the captaincy mm. as well we'd love to hear later um about your captaincy if you know how many points you got last year it'll be interesting to hear because i did very badly as you're saying and i think that's a point in my game i'm looking to improve so keen to talk to you more about that later tonight as well how we improve uh -huh. yeah and um uh, what else is the other thing that's changed i think is uh formation because it used to be big strikers I looked at all those seasons and that you like, had like Aguero and um, Costa, Rooney, players like that. And um, they suddenly disappeared, didn't they? All the strikers disappeared apart from Kane. And, it, you know, and the, you started getting expensive defenders, etc. And I think I probably failed to adapt a little bit because the game changed. But naturally, because I'd been getting so many top finishes, I kept playing the same way as I had been. You know, you would. You did had that winning formula, so I kept using it, and it no longer kind of worked quite so well. But I'm thinking this season, I think it suits me. You know, it's a bit it's a bit like horse racing. You know, some horses like good going, others like soft going, etc. And I think this season is kind of um, more traditional. You know, you've got the Ronaldo, Kane, Aubameyang, Lukaku, and uh, there's a lot more choice up front, et cetera. And I think it's going to uh, hopefully going to play into my hands. Although DCL is uh, definitely screwed me over tonight, big time, I think. But uh, <laughs> just, just, you, can't just to, you can't take luck out the game. That's the problem, isn't no, that, too? Definitely not. Just, just to pull you back, they say you're talking about the years where you had those, like, that amazing run of good finishes. Was there anything kind of common in your strategy amongst all those seasons? Like, you know, were. Were you a fairly template player? Because like you're a player that was hitting kind of top 100s. Now, I was on Scout, say, around 2012. I started posting on Scout. I was fairly template. I only kind of got top 5K, just outside the top 5K. But you have ranks kind of similar to, say, Lit Razor, where you were hitting a top 100. So would you kind of consider yourself template, but maybe a wee bit more cavalier sometimes? Or like, how, how would you describe your play style? It's difficult to know, you know, because I think, you probably had the same information that I had and were yeah. probably on scout just as much as I was and doing the same things I was. And yeah, my, like you say, my ranks are in the hundreds and yours are in the thousands. And it's very difficult. That's, that's awful kind of you, Nick. It's um, very, very <laughs> difficult. Thousands, to that's great numbers. I wish it was. <laughs> but it's very difficult to know why, isn't it? It's, it's really is. Cause I, did, all I did was go on scout and watch uh, scout show, etc. And do what everybody else does. Yeah, I suddenly had like five years of those ranks, and um, I, lo I looked at the blog yesterday. And that season, I took only took four hits in the last of those top one thousand. Only it's took four hits that season. I was going to ask you: Did you manage to like remember how many hits you've taken? Because when we spoke to Bakar as well in the season, he came fourth. He said he only took I think five hits, and he burnt a yeah. transfer that season. He recalls, and I've never burnt a transfer. Yeah. What about you? But part of it is you get a good start, so you don't need to take hits. So that, that's the other thing. Is I think a couple of seasons I did take more hits than that, you know, like probably 10 or 11 hits. But um, ne nev I was never cavalier, you know. I'd never take hits to remove players that were playing. That premium and players. Just, yeah. to swap one, just to swap one for another. Yeah, apart I did it last week, which, but Ronaldo was like a really unusual situation, wasn't he? But... Um,
did you come into that journey with us then you, your fellow captain or yeah well, yeah captain Ronaldo so um but that was kind of unusual wasn't it normally I, I don't like taking hits for players that are when I've already got people that are playing because they can hurt you as much as help you often can't they so um and we're not out of the woods yet right like we've got the captaincy out of uh, him but all the enablers that funded Ronaldo all of them have blanked apart from Gray, who's playing now, I guess, as well. It must uh, be the end of the first half. Don't, uh, don't, don't, don't tell me if he scores. That'd be, the, that'd be the bloody end. I suppose he's playing at striker as well now, is he? Or I something? think probably in the front two or something. Well, well he's, he looks like he's playing the front three, I think. Don't, t- don't tell me. What's up with swearing? What just else just, we do here, both, sorry, is let's just say hi to some of the viewers as well before we carry on. Um, We've actually gone through quite quickly today. We wanted to get straight to the chat, but um, just before it disappears, because the comments disappear, I'll just say hi to everyone quickly, Nick. And then, obviously, um, I know if you guys have questions as well for Nick, once we get through the interview stage at the end, you'll have your chance to speak to him. And he tells me he has no hard stops, so let's see if there's questions worth asking. Otherwise, we will let him go eventually. Um, so we've got, Eve, uh, was it 89 Bastard? He says, evening all, first person. Pete Gray, nice to see you um we have chris france i see ramon for friend of the show another regular blue danube guy jaskara and we've got actually gabriel as well one of the co-hosts from the matchups show we've got mike halpin nice to see him here pete who else anyone else Ch- anthony chung we've got fpl dallas is here assemble the haulers rob Baducky here when he's not on uh, twitter spaces he's here on youtube with us quack quack anyone else we have I was going to ask Robert Ducky, does he actually work? Because every time I look at him, he's on spaces. It's true. Um, on, on that note, they're just hi to Ant A and Blue Nix 99. So that's everyone who's here so far. Um, the numbers are, we've just gone over 20 um, viewers as well, I think. So that's a nice little moment. Let's hope we can get upwards of 50 guys. Do spread the word. Um, now that we're live, I can't really tweet. So go to the pinned tweet on the net, that whole Twitter account if you can, and get the word out and hit like while you're here on the video. But um. Let's get you to the juicy stuff for the rest then. Um, we'll, we'll ask Rubber Ducky later, Hibbo, about whether he works because he was on a stream I've joined any time of the day or night. Um, but Nick, see, back I to the it. questions Hibbo has for you. Uh, so like talking about, say, your best season, so like you, we look at that season where you came 35th. Firstly, like how close did you come to winning it? Were you, were you anywhere near close? And on that season, did you feel any pressure? And if you felt any pressure... How did you deal with the pressure, really? Because I kind of look sometimes at players that get up that high, and is it nearly that you become almost like in a money league? Like the top 50 becomes a money league in itself? I don't know. Very much. Um, Especially back then, it was kind of... Once you get up there, there's actually gaps start appearing. Like You're like five points maybe between you and the guy behind you, etc. And it it actually becomes very hard to move. You know, you don't lose much either because everyone tends all those ones up there tend to pick the same players once you get up there and um it's like a little club you know you're like so it's it is it's almost like a little mini league but the thing is although i was 35th i never felt like i had a chance of winning it because um i think i was still like 80 80 or 90 points behind the person who won it it's crazy you know it's ridiculous once you get up kind of at those levels but i actually felt less pressure in that year than I did in the other years because you're like fighting for a top 1,000 finish and like the rank swings each week were um, bigger. You know, you might one bad week and you could fall out the top 1,000 or whatever. But once you get in the 30s, it's crazy. I mean, I was doing pretty well, but then I, I got, oh, I can't remember his name. I bought somebody in and he got a red card and I, I got a minus three from him, I think. And um drove me crazy you know it kind of ruined any chance i had of winning and then i kind of settled for a spot in the 30s after that i didn't take any risks and try and win the thing but like i said when you're 80 or 90 points behind it was like pretty unrealistic anyway so it's interesting you yeah. say that because because said something similar where he said and i think actually it was abdul as well so it was fpl salah he said that he felt that when he was say top 1k it wasn't worth like pushing the wrist to like get top 500 or top 250 because you could end up out of the top 10k by trying to push and he said that's yeah. the first place from top 1k that could be 100 to 200 points away the so best thing to I do no is idea, such a big gap the best thing to do is to just play steady and hope that it's the others that try and do yeah, that make them panic, and then, yeah. then they're gonna make suboptimal picks or captain 
captain's suboptimal captains to try and win it and then they fall fall away. Basically just play ABC sort of um fantasy and let the others make the mistakes. You know, you see it every week, don't you? It's it's like even it's, this week. You have a good start though, you're right. Like um it's easy mm. to overmanage, isn't it? It's like even this week, you know, I've maybe I've got a slight red arrow now because of DCL not playing. It would have been green, I think, but apparently about 20% of people in the top 10K use a chip chip this week. You know, they either used a triple captain on Ronaldo or they wild carded, et cetera. So you've got 20% of people burning a chip. So even if you get a slight red arrow, really it's not a red arrow at all, you know, because they're using chips and people flying ahead of you with their triple captains. And in the long run, they're all going to drop away. So um, there's no need to worry at this stage if you're getting small red arrows, etc. cetera. You know, there's no need to um, worry about it. Because that's the other thing, of course. There weren't any rank, chips. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what I was going to say. What do you think is a good rank at the moment? Then? Because for me, if you're in the top like 500K, even top 1 million now, even top 2 million, you can probably easily get top 100K. If you're in top like 500K, you can still come top 10K. Like it's all very... Small yeah, and I think people are no. like jumping to conclusions and not seeing all the chips being used around them. L- last year, I would have said you're right, but this year, I don't think you are because um, you play stronger than ever before. You because reckon. Twitter's all got a good start, and they're the ones you need to worry about. Whereas Isn't it last just a few year, content creators last year, Twitter, last year, year Twitter had a terrible start, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. And um, so we were all like at a million or whatever. <laughs> But yeah, it was. people ahead of us are all casuals, but that's not the case this year, is it? I mean, if you're in a million, you've got like all the good players are already ahead of you. So um, what about top 500? Would that be easier yeah, yeah. to come back? Yeah, probably, I think so. Okay. If you, if yeah. you just play sensibly, I think late riser said today, you know, don't look at your rank and start trying to catch up too quick. You know, just play it's way too early to think about. Just that, play you know? sensibly and uh, yeah. I thought, was, I thought he was quite honest because you can talk about Kane trying to force a transfer. And like whenever I saw him make the transfer for Kane, I kind of I, w- I would never like to be critical of somebody else's transfers, but I thought he did. I thought he did kind of try and force it a wee bit. And he admitted himself kind of today that he did try and force yeah. it. Yeah, he did you that know. last season as well. I said to him last season because he, he just started doing his podcasts and everything and going all celebrity and I says to him look I says it's going to affect the way you play you know because it did with me as well and um you're going to start making moves to please the crowd etc and he did you know he went too hard to try and be um chasing the upside or whatever he calls it and like it you know not going with Salah and stuff and uh I think that was the pressure of being like a celebrity sort of makes you play differently we need you to um try and get your wild card active or take a hit live on air. I think that'll be your equivalent of making a decision like that. I don't think I'll do it live because I don't know if I'm going to do it. Yet. I might better get away with a minus four. We'll have a, have a see later. But um, I don't know if you're going to have my team up here or not today. But um, I haven't just, had a chance to look at it myself yet. Just a touch on Lit Razor. I kind of think because he does have as many followers as what he has and he's on this kind of public sphere in the FPL Twitter, like people kind of publicly come out and say your moves were shit, man, and that must wow. that, mu- that must be really hard to fucking watch it's because not like you, proper you, abuse you, online. <laughs> no, but like we're just men and just human beings, and you're looking at your phone and somebody's somebody's calling your transfer shit, and you know that they've cost you maybe fucking twenty points, and you're thinking, yeah, thanks, buddy, thanks, thanks a lot for that. Remember <laughs> when the guy said my transfers were shit, and then I called him out on air, and I was like, your transfers were shit. You sold Salah, Captain Kane, fuck you. Both your players returned. I kept Tony. I didn't blank. Fuck you. Because he told me Livermento was a bad <laughs> idea. And I was like, I've done, I was going to burn a transfer. And imagine, he doesn't even follow me and they comment on you, Nick. So if Late Riser has that many followers and people who don't even follow me comment on my tweets and I'm a smaller account, what is going on with Late Riser? He must have got so much messages yeah. spurring him on to do upside chasing, but then also messages of abuse once it goes wrong yeah they all encourage him to do it and then when he does they all turn on his back i mean that ha- used to happen to me because you know when i'd had those top five finishes like everyone was bloody wanted to know what i was doing the whole time and uh it's blooming hard it, it, it does it's even even this season because like, i went without fernandez in game week one and he got a hat trick and all these people were on my back. I was getting all these personal messages telling me how shit I was, you know, because and, I, and I'd said I'd pick the game for the 
the team for the first three weeks, you know, and they're all posting their scores 120 or whatever after game week one and telling me I'm useless, etc. Now I'm ahead of them all. They've all gone quiet, you know. So, but it's annoying. It's the really how many weeks crazy. ahead do you look then? Because for me, I always when I buy someone, I say generally it's kind of at least four to six weeks is my outlook, and only defenders is longer than that. Like a four point five defender, I'll and goalkeepers, I want to keep them for like ten weeks plus, but. Every other position is like easy to move every four to six weeks, I think. It's six weeks with me. I put the fantasy scout ticker up and add an extra week. So I think there's default, it's only five weeks. So I add another one, so it's six weeks. And then um, very rare that I pick anybody that's not in the top seven or eight teams. It's interesting. What do you think about people who say that all of us subconsciously, I guess, when we do posts, we use data that's going to like reinforce whatever we were predisposed to want to do so whenever people come and tell me like oh you should do this move or that move everyone's basically telling each other to make their teams the same as each other's and i know you're you're probably a fan yeah i know but you can't ask for I'm... an rmt because people say well your team's good the nine players we both have and the other two you should make them mine yeah it's ridiculous, <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> you guys gave my team a good rating pre-season i remember i came on the show and um put put my team on the show when you were doing the rate my teams yeah. and um, <laughs> I think Hibbo gave me nine out of ten for my team. Wow! Because I had was Greenwood, was I had team. Greenwood in it, and it, it worked out really well. And Greenwood turned out to be pretty good, didn't he? So he um, matched uh, Bruno until the did last work game. Out. Yeah, he actually matched up. Bruno despite the hat trick. So, <laughs> <laughs> tell us, of, oh, sorry, go on, Hibbo. Tell, tell us a wee bit about your process. Like, do, so do you watch a lot of games and say, say when the game week ends, like, do you jump on the like? data tables and stats and do you use say like a planner because like I never used to use a planner and it's something like I'm doing now this season where I'm kind of putting my team under a spreadsheet and looking is that something you do or I don't, I don't put it in a planner as such I just uh, check the fixtures that they've all got and make sure they're good check the defense I look for weeks where my defenders have got a bad week and then kind of work out what I'm going to do from there. But um, I watch a few games and because they're all on, and they're all on here. I can watch anyone I want. And um, so I, I watch like probably three or four on a Saturday, and then the Sunday and Monday game. I tend to avoid the ones like you know, sort of Burnley versus Norwich and that type of thing. I won't bother watching those type of games normally. But um, any any that have got players in that I'm interested in bringing in, and I'll uh, generally watch those games. Then I, then, I look, then I look on the um, scout website, you know, on the members area and look at all the stats, et cetera, and then my own stats and various other things. And then I'll kind of work out what I'm doing. But um, I don't generally worry about what other people are doing, you know. I've, I watch the shows and that, but I don't, uh, not influenced by them, I think. I'm quite good at avoiding being influenced, but. Would you yeah, watch for entertainment, would you say, more than for advice, right? That's how I feel. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I watch this one and I watch um, Jason and Steve-O on um, Elite. Elite FPL. And um, then I'll watch uh, Black Box and The Wire, probably. They're, they're more of the ones that I look at to see, to get an idea of, you know, what the general sort of people are doing type because that no, it has quite an influence, I think, on what people do. Those ones, don't they? They're more ones that people on, use on to that, copy. Though, yeah. And yeah, that's what I was going to say. So we have a comment from in the live chat for the podcast. It says from Pastor Gaines. He says they've had enough of the Twitter herd mentality. So it just felt like a good time to kind of put that up from the live chat. So if people say relevant things that direct the conversation, we will put up your questions as we go. If it's naturally part of what we're discussing. So what do you think about the herd mentality? Because I know that. You're, you're you're famously like not really up for everyone just having the same team. And would you say you've ever been guilty of like picking a player just because you wanted it to be different? Because I know I have, and I try to um, not pick in that way anymore. I try to avoid that. Like if they're the best pick and everyone else thinks it's the best pick, I, I'd rather see that as there's a reason everyone thinks it's the best pick because there's so much more data now. So I guess my question as like a higher level, more uh, more of a metaphysical one is, do you use any optimization tools or software or is it just all human process on your end? Like, how are you pretty, analyzing this? It's pretty much all human doing it. You know, I look, got tables and stuff I look at. But um, the herd mentality, yeah, it's pretty shocking. But 
Even, even back when I was doing my website, etc., it was the same men. I mean, I look, I saw a post in there yesterday, and eight people were had the same team as me at the end of September in 2015. So I put in a sly, um, I made a sly transfer that I told people I'd done one thing and did another just to get shake them off my back, you know. And uh, I got a bit of criticism for that at the time, you know, because a bit like um, FPL family last season, you know, I copped it for doing that. But um, there were just so many people copying. And it, it's even worse now, isn't it? It's got it's so much there for people to, you know, it's crazy. But um, I, I think it's got I narrower would... and narrower with a template. I think when you look at the like of I think fantasy football fix, they launched their like elite eleven thing where like people yeah. can now people can now see live updates of what these kind of Hall of Fame type managers are doing as they make their transfer maybe tonight, like the people will know straight away through some yeah, kind yeah. of Doing it in real time. It's fucking crazy, isn't it? Isn't it? Like it's it is ridiculous, isn't it? But people use it to try and win their mini leagues and that, I guess, but it's just um I don't understand it really. It's crazy, isn't it? I would never do it, but uh, I can't see where the enjoyment comes from it because it's all supposed to be fun, isn't it? And uh, there's no fun in just copying somebody else. And as we see them... it, we see it in Hoblick. So in fantasy football, Hoblick, you have a certain group of managers that are like the team reveal readers, and, and you get people replying in the comments under their articles. They say, oh, well, why did you not update that article on Thursday when you made the transfer? Because no. I was I was planning on copying you, but Lovermento rose in price, and then I couldn't make the changes, and blah blah blah. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, like, it's it's funny, like you know, it's it's a bit annoying. I think it's, I used to get it all the bloody time, and um, I end up doing my transfers one minute before the deadline to throw them all off. You know, so we have to pay more for the same player. So, <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. But, but like, say, um, say, say, like in terms of content, so like, who would be like your most kind of trusted content sources? Because like, I know at the minute on Twitter. There's kind of content overload in Twitter, and I kind of think at the same time we see a lot of these people with big Twitter accounts, but we don't actually know if they have a good record. So, like, how do you kind of shut out that noise, and who do you trust? Would really be the question. Oh, I don't really trust anybody. I just kind of I'll see things that are interesting, and then I'll go and check it out for myself. You know, I don't just um, go by what somebody else says. You know, like you said, I mean, a lot of them haven't got a very good record themselves, yet they're, like, doing all these things, giving advice to people, you know. I can't quite like to see it, really, you know, because I think, well, that's leading them down the wrong path and uh, quite happy to let them get on with it, you know. But uh, and then again, I mean, rank isn't everything, is it? So some people are good at better explaining things and playing the game, you know, because... It's like even people in my work mini league, some of them are just as good as I am at picking the right players, but where they fall down is in the timing of the transfers and that type of thing, you know. So you can have people that are very good at reading the game that don't have a very good rank. You know, they might be impulsive mm -hmm. or um, too conservative or whatever, and they never have a great rank, but they're actually very good at knowing what the good players are, you know. So you mm -hmm. can't just... Um, dismiss people because they've haven't got a great record but um no. you know so uh it's very it? but i don't do get just um, accept anything at face value i always go and check it you do your own dirty work yeah yeah i mean often i get good ideas off um twitter or sometimes everyone would be on a player and i think well you know i don't really like that player and i'll avoid it you know but you have to think like um you know, you have to think very carefully now before you dismiss a Twitter player because they're normally pretty spot on, isn't it? It's anal everything's analysed so much that Twitter generally gets it right. So um, you need a good reason not to go with something, you know. I think, I think you do. Like, we talk about this. And, like, when you look at, say, even pre-season, if you look at kind of the template at the start of the season, it was really strong, but it also had the ground running. And your team was slightly different to mine, but... I think we would look at each other's teams and think, oh, you're playing a 3-5-2, so your team's very different because we maybe had two players different. But really, yeah, the, Twitter, really the Twitter template is just kind of slight variations on each other, like if you know what I mean. The funny thing is, late riser, talking about late riser again, but me and him have got like this real strong rivalry going back for like 10 years or more probably. 
And uh, so I'm always looking at what he's up to. And he started the season and his team looked really different from mine, like you say, although there was only probably two or three differences. Mm. But this week, we've actually got identical teams. <laughs> they didn't start off identical because I didn't have Fernandez and I had Greenwood and Sun. But like since then, he's got rid of Fernandez. I've brought in Rafinha, who he had. And it's kind of, they've ended up exactly the same apart from the third sub. You know, so he's got exactly the same score as me this week. He's got exactly the same injuries as me, which is about bloody six. And I'm very interested to see what he's going to do this week, you know, because I'm very pissed off about this week. Really, yeah. I'll tell you what, I, I think I've played really well this season, right? I've played a bloody blinder. I've planned everything perfectly. Three days ago, I had no trouble with my team. Now I've got Antonio stuff, like everybody else, you know, that's fair enough. Webster, injured. Everyone else got like six or seven points from a Brighton defender. I got one point and a long-term injury. DCL, out as well. You know, lots have got in, but have they also got those others? Gibson didn't play. The Norwich midfielder. Simicast is, yeah, Gilmore. Simicast is stuffed. And my team's gone from having no problems to suddenly having like five or six disasters in it. So crazy that's just what fpl is like you know it can you can be going along perfectly one day and then the next day crazy that's why i didn't want to use my wild card because you never know when something like that can happen it can change so quickly and um i think i'm gonna have to use it now i think it's got so quite interested this week to see what late riser does because he's in exactly the same boat as me because you've got the same team so um it is. It's going to be interesting. I think he's going to wild card, surely. Oh, but keep ben Mee has scored, by the way. If you look hey? on the screen. Ben Who did he score? Ben Mee. Oh, good. Oh, well, it's not good, actually, because I've got Dick Dina in um, fan team. But um, Yeah, I've got him in other formats. but It's, it's funny because I've got, I've got all these fan teams, right, which I should theoretically care about much more than FPL because there's like Morning. Women, hundreds of thousands to win. Yeah, I get really wound up when I get an injury in FPL. But when I get one in fan team, it's like, oh, who cares? You know, it just doesn't it just um, sell them. Yeah, We've grab so me in the. Yeah. It just doesn't grab me in the same way though. Like FPL shouldn't <laughs> grab me that much because you only win like a blooming postage stamp or something, you know. And it's like, crazy, isn't it? It's, you get a zip bag, but it does. Like it it gets into your head because it's probably because of that record i've got i just want another top 1000 finish but um really i should be thinking more about fan team but um i don't for some reason top 100 finish yeah. in the season long and fan team is life-changing as you say well top top one would be wouldn't it i don't know yeah, about top 100 <laughs> top... <laughs> <laughs> top, top 100 one. might buy you a holiday that would be about it probably wouldn't it but if, i'm talking about having multiple teams there so like if you stack like four or five entries all with the same team and then try yeah, and ride four, them into the top. <laughs> that would be good. What would happen if all hundred of your teams finished first? I suppose you'd just clean up, wouldn't you? Uh, you would thing, just yeah. split the two hundred you would split the two hundred K between But no one and... else would um, well, yeah, yeah, wouldn't, just, wouldn't there be no positions for money? So second to one nine nine no one would get paid out, I think. Yeah you get the whole uh, lot. Because the next just, rank would be third. You just Joint scoop the whole ball. <laughs> Ah, uh, good point. Uh, I reckon, like, the, oh, actually, you know, the, yeah, the next rank would be like two hundred and one. Right. So then, so it would be that like first, and then two hundred and one is the next. Yeah. Person. Oh wow, that. <laughs> no, that's good. But guys, I tried to share my screen and crashed again. I've got less windows open. I'm gonna try one more time for the new viewers just to put your rank up. If it crashes again, um, I will be back. But I'm trying to do it in a way that's less likely to cause issues. Okay, it seems to be surviving right now. I'll tell you something that else that happened in uh, 2015-16 after my good run. Do you know what happened then? I joined Twitter. <laughs> Sounds about it's, right. Uh, before Twitter, I, I, had this, I had this private Facebook group. I started this private Facebook group. And um, I think we had about, I got about 100 people in there. And some of them were quite new to the game, et cetera. I was like helping, all helping each other. And um, now, I think, like, Backer was in there. Zoha was in there. Right. Guys from Who Got Your Sister in there. Were you in there? Lots lots of people in there. And even world number one, 
uh, Fabio, he was in there. He joined. Right. He'd only just he'd only just started playing, and now he's like the world number one. So many good managers in there. It's unbelievable, you know. That, and uh, we had like this private group going, and none of us, I think, were on Twitter really. And it was so good. The quality that's come out of that group is just insane. And um, yeah, still going now, but uh, now everyone's distracted with Twitter and stuff like that. But uh, like you say, the information overload on Twitter. I don't know if it's actually good for people's games or not, to be honest. Like, that, does it dumb everything down? Do you know what I mean? I mean, consensus picks aren't always does. the best picks. Because, like, we used to run it on, our, on that website, we used to run a community league and we'd all like vote for who we wanted to transfer in, et cetera. And individually, we we're all like top managers. But the community team always used to do rubbish. And it was because it was like a consensus pick. You know, they're all good picks, but something about a group like mentality picks is not as good as individual. And I don't know why, but um, I'm wondering if Twitter actually the has that effect on everybody. Yeah. Tyranny of the masses. Does it does it dumb everything down? We need you a know? benevolent dictator, Nick, to lead us to glory you, come number you, one in FPL. You know, you get all, all, all the content creators, and they all head in the same direction every week, don't they? It's like, they're, like they've had a meeting at the start of a week, and they said, right, who are we going <laughs> to plug this week? You know, and then they start off on the Tuesday, and they'll, and they'll do a pod where they pretend they're going to do some differentials. And then they'll do another pod later in the week where they've all gone back to the, the extreme template, you know. I, I think saw I saw that commenting on someone. I think uh, someone was, I don't know who it was. Someone was, oh, I feel bad. I think I know who it was. They were saying, what if I just get, I think it was Ben, Ben Krellin. He was like, what if I just get like Semedo and like this other player and I, I just won't go Ronaldo, I'll get this defender. I saw and that. Like, and, and then right at deadline, once his team came out, he was like, Okay, I've gone Ronaldo, I've captained him. And I think it was Nick who commented on Ben's post and was like, No, nah, come on, man. Like, this is going to be Ronaldo captain come deadline or something. Was that you or was that someone else saying It might have been happened? me, but every, everybody did that <laughs> last week, didn't they? They were all brave at the start of a fortnight. And then by the end of it, they were all jumping on Ronaldo. But it does um, seem like it. But Just people a, did seem to do all right without him, though, didn't they? Because I was say, um, the Lukaku owners still did well. Yeah, yeah, they did well. And even, even people who kept in Salah and had, still had Fernandez. I mean, they didn't do that badly, really. They still did okay, I think. In the grand scheme of things, stuff like, um, you know, what just happened with Calvert-Lewin not playing and Livramento coming off benches, Duffy coming off benches, that did more damage to them. That's probably. annoying. I get one point coming off for bloody ailing and everyone's going to get Livramento, aren't they? That's what's going to happen. It, that's exa- I've seen my rank dropped already just from an uh, oh, I was thinking I'd get a red arrow. You know, all I needed was like an assist or something from DCL or a goal. It would have been a nice green arrow. Instead, they're all getting fluky bench points. And uh, that's the trouble with this game. There's too much luck involved. There is. <laughs> that's, no, what makes it, right. that's what makes it interesting though, isn't it? And it's how you react to But would you say that it's like luck poker as then? well? Because I think that um, it's like poker think... where you're playing against each other. So you're actually playing the hmm. other FPL managers. So if you do go differently from the pack and it works, you're in a good position. Um, mm. one, it's one each. Make us make our keen goal. One one. Nick Pope clean sheet wiped. I don't know who. I, has think, I think I think it's more like backgammon where you've got like the best moves, but you've also got the dice rolls yes. every day. and you have to kind of try and make a move that if where a, a bad dice roll doesn't hurt you too much you know if you make the right move you can say well if he rolls if i roll a three and a one i'm screwed so you kind of try and insulate yourself from what happens when things go bad you know and um that's kind of what i do on quite often you know i think it was game week three where i captained antonio over sun because my thinking was that if i captain sun and he does badly i'd be screwed Whereas if I captain Antonio and he does badly, I won't be screwed because everyone else is captaining him anyway, sort of thing. So it's a sword kind of, and shield kind of mentality. Yeah, that? sword and shield. You kind of use that to, you think, well, what's my biggest downside? And you try and work out how to minimise what happens if things do go wrong. 
you know and um, i'm gonna have to do that this week with my team you know I've had some bad luck and it's how you react to it that's important isn't it i mean some people have taken minus 16 make their team worse go on tilt and uh it'll, all the wheels will fall from, off. from me yeah, yeah exactly i saw someone take a minus four to bring in treore last week and then he messages me yesterday and he's like i'm on tilt i'm thinking take another yeah. minus four and sell treore for gallagher then I'm going to sell Antonio for a hit and get Lukaku on top of Ronaldo. And he's just starting to panic. And I'm like, you just took yeah. a hit to bring in Traore. How are you going to take a minus eight to buy and sell Traore to get Gallagher <laughs> against Liverpool? Like, And you're not going to captain Lukaku in the next two. It's just people are panicking. And there were like people who took minus four last night because they wanted to get a rise on a defender or whatever. And now, and now they might have DCL in their side and they've already taken a minus four. You know, but so he- it's... Just crazy. But he, here's my here's my thing on that. We, we've got Champions League and Europa League coming this week. So see anybody taking like a minus four on a player already? What's wrong? Yeah, exactly. What's exactly. wrong? Like, like the way they, the way they, no, but in all honesty, the way they play FPL, that's not the way they play FPL. It's like don't be don't be taking a hat before the final games being played of the week and before the European action started in midweek. Like, you know, leave your transfer to like Thursday night if you if you need him. I got the Thursday night. What pisses me off is when they get away with it and then their third co- sub comes on with 20 points or whatever and then they go, oh, it was skill because I had, I picked this third sub, you know, knowing it's not have to come comes on, etc. Right? Remember some and, people get 20 But live Rimento, and the only reason they get these players is because they only cost 4 million. It wasn't because they thought they'd be any good. But as soon as they get them come on, you know, it was all skill. So it drives you nuts. On that right, note, what's now this, that we've got what's the back up, we've got some stuff that I don't know if you knew was coming, but we have an extract from your witch transfer blog on WordPress. Um, yeah, this and- was from I was looking at this yesterday. This was from that because you were, you sent me some questions asking what my thought processes were on my good years, and I went back to that actual season and actually found what I'd wrote at the end of that season. And um, I think I finished 500, so, and this is what I wrote you know, like straight after that. So this is kind of what I was doing. You and it's exactly now as well, right? Like pick captain from top exactly. of the Exactly. That's what I mean. Be patient it, it, with known assets, keep it to a minimum. Like hmm. I wasn't doing anything differently then than I do now, which is, you know, that's what I really, um, the thing I took away from yesterday was that I'm not doing anything differently. You know, the game might have changed, but I, I haven't, you know, whether I haven't adapted or not. Um, that's a really interesting point at the end because you did it say is to important. me it is actually the only way you can get like a top 1K, I think. Like top 10K, you might salvage top 100K. Because... Realistic, but top 1K, you have to have a good start. Because like when you get a good start, what happens is everybody else moves towards your team. So even and, if those players... And they block, might be taking hits to do it. <laughs> Yeah, you know, if you get a good start and others don't, then everyone's buying the players you've got because they've got, you know, because they're players that have had a good start. So all your player prices are going up. People are moving to your team. Others are using a wild card to get the team you've already got, etc. So it does, it gives you an advantage, you know, and then uh, a good start, it is, it's crucial. And the last few seasons I've had bad starts, you know. I think this is the first decent start I've had since about, 2015 2016 so i'm um, so hopefully you can go yeah, on with nice it start. You, you can go back to winning ways and it it's may a be good another start. Year two premium attackers as well yeah exactly i'm thinking so but uh um, this this dcl business has derailed me a bit but we should see way, i didn't so want to have to use townsend, my wild card yet two two one to townsend scored again this time he has a he has a goal on the sauce i picked him actually before the season is my like differential to watch was Townsend you know everyone's nice. jumped on great but he did miss a game I think but it was one game he didn't start so it kind of put me off him well but done to it's, it's the other thing is Barbara, by the way who has Townsend a lot of people go for the person that scored in the previous week all the time don't they like nobody this week looked at Townsend did they everyone no, well, automatically we went for at, gray everyone went for gray Corey because the Corey assisted ah. him it looks like and in our pre-season episode in July we were saying Decore could be a steal based on some advice we got from, I think it was Prem Tipster, FPL Prem Tipster and FPL Tornado. They were like our Everton correspondents and they said Decore could do well in this system. Ah. He might play further forward like his Watford days. So it is interesting because in Sky, I almost bought Decore instead of Gray, but because of sheer ownership, I panicked and got Gray as a shield. Just on How much that does he, well, 5. How much does he cost? 5.5. 5. 5. 5. So let's go and have a look. 
he could be nice throughout this season. He's getting his goals and assists. Oh, 3 1. Hold oh, up. Then it's just getting the fucking third. annoying. I, but I, think it's, dry. I think it's the Corey. Again. <laughs> <laughs> or no, no Gray scored. Great. So I've got him in oh, Sky. Fuck okay. off. <laughs> oh, no, that's going to damage my FPL rank, though. You're but right. Gray Whatever scored. happens, it's so sad when our FPL is more important than fan team. That's Can't devastating. Max on the top. I bet livefpl.net is going to crash. Let's have a look. Oh, wow. The average and the safety score have gone way up. <laughs> having DCL out and then having that prick grey score, it's just like... <laughs> <laughs> it's ruined my fucking day, though. It's... You know, you get... All it's ruined my day, too, to be fair. All, all 10 midfielders blank, don't they? And you just know... That fucking Gray's going to come along and fuck up your game week. Game on a Monday. Like <laughs> Except all the pricks on Twitter who have all got him. That's the only people you were... 99% of people posting on Twitter tonight will have him. All, all the, the wild card is All the rest will have turned off. Or game week four, is it? Yeah, all the game week four wild card is have him. All, all the ones that just got Gray because everyone else was and like he got a goal a week before. You know, the depth of their analysis and... Oh, it's rough. And then he got him because it's the only one they could afford to get because they were getting Ronaldo, you know. Do you know who the next one is, though? Gallagher. So I always say if you look at the transfers and you transfer a player out and you just look at the top six, like most points in any position, if there's like a cheap player that's like half the price of every other player, (laughs) anyone who transfers out an injured player or a red carded player just buys the cheapest guy on the scroll down. Like every casual, millions of them, as you say. (laughs) Oh, God. But um, on that note, there was a comment earlier, I think. It was about Late Riser's move, actually. Um, I'm trying to find a few. So apparently he's posted it on Twitter and he has already done um, Calvert-Lewin to Bamford by the sounds of it. Yeah, it sounds like the move is done. Uh, he he, he a wild card, Steve, because he's still wild card once you made your transfer, can't he? He's raged him out yeah. and he's done a rage transfer, hasn't he? And then it will come to a uh, wild card. Let's see if you wild card. He, he, he didn't do it, need to do it tonight, did he? There was no reason why, unless Bamford's rising tonight. Let's go and have a look and see if Bamford's rising yeah, let's tonight. Have a look. He can't be, surely. Like Price change predictor. Here we go. Surely not. Like Doesn't look like it. No, <laughs> no he's nowhere near like... a rise. And yeah. uh, DC, DCL's not dropping. So why make a transfer tonight? But, but everyone does, don't they? <laughs> It's wild carding, isn't it? You know what we need, Nick? We need to find a clip, yeah. I'm going to show you a clip right now of when I embarrass myself. I think you might have seen it already, so I won't play it again. But we're going to get a clip of you when you said that Grey has ruined, DCL and Grey have ruined your Monday night. We're going to clip that little 30 second oh, snippet because no. it's, it's an epic rant. It's, 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 it's also Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning. Oh, Tuesday it? morning, yeah. Uh, it's going to look embarrassing, this. <laughs> At least you're not drunk, right? At least we can see you're sober as the morning. Will be, I will be soon. <laughs> You've done a run. <laughs> you deserve it. It's 12 o'clock somewhere. I haven't had a bad game week still, really. I mean, what's Gray's ownership? It, it won't damage us much, to be realistic. No. It's a 12% EO. Not, oh, no, wait. That's before the reload. It said 0.24 damage. It's way more than that. <laughs> but it won't be too much. That's the main thing. It's 12% it's EO. still not a terrible game week. I mean, it's, it's going to be a, green, a red arrow, but it's not huge. No, it's it's still, an, it's still annoying now when I, you know, you start the evening off looking forward to seeing DCL, and then the managers are pricking me. All that stuff about his bloody quad injury. That was two weeks ago, and he's going, oh, he's just got a quad injury. Is that how has he not mentioned this before? It's actually ridiculous. Even Ben Dinry t- really lost week thought he might. Start. I'll tell you what they, I'll tell you what they do in the Australian rugby league, right? They've got a different system over there. Like the managers have to actually give a team out on the Tuesday or Wednesday night. And any changes that they're going to make, they have to inform the like rugby press. league people. Mm. Yeah, not just the press, the actual rugby league people. And because um, it affects the bookmakers, etc. you know, you'd like to know who's playing and that. And uh, it makes it so much easier playing that game because you know who's going to play. You know, it's FPL. What's the point of having press That's conferences so if they're just going to lie? Like, yeah. They lie it's so a, much, right? Exactly. It's getting ridiculous. <laughs> it, it, it never used to be as bad as this. Now we just don't even pretend they're telling the truth. It's Do you remember like last bollocks. year when the robot picked up that Grealish had sold like Watkins or someone who was injured and Dean Smith was like, no, like I live in a real world, not in a fantasy world. He tried to ban his players from FPL. Like, Oh, that's it was right. crazy times, right? 
on that note, Hibbo, should we ask a little bit about the chips and then just a little bit about the followings and stuff? On where's, the where's this clip? Where's, where's, oh, do you want to see the clip? Okay, well, clip. Um, on, I please. wanted to avoid being embarrassed, but I thought you might have already seen it, so I was trying to hide it. No, no. Okay, this is the, I think, I don't know if Tom is here, but it's a good time to play, it, actually. So on that note, you know Fabio Borges we were talking about? On the live mm. uh, rank, actually, he's uh, dropped from first, and Tom Stevenson badges has overtaken him on the current Scout Live Hall of Fame. This is a thing of that Hall of Fame, right? You can get to the top, but you're never going to stay there for very long because you've got, like, millions of people chasing it. And, like, there, there is luck in the game. You know, you can have, like, a run like I had or even a bit worse, and you can get up there. But staying there, I think, you just got to enjoy it because there's no way you're going to stay there at all. I think I should have been top actually in that Hall of Fame. Hey, that's what that's I, what I'm going to ask. How, I how, think how, I was how, robbed. How high did you go? <laughs> well, I was number two for two seasons, but um, wow. the only re the only reason the only reason I wasn't number one is because they changed the way they do it to um, reward, like to make it reward consistency a bit more. They changed the formula. And um, that season in 2007-8, when I didn't even start playing until about game week four or something, ended up costing me a top spot in the Hall of Fame. I mean, those first couple of seasons, totally irrelevant in my view. I wasn't even playing the bloody game properly. And then I got the best five-year run in the history of the game, and I wasn't number one on the Hall of Fame. And the guy who wrote the Hall of Fame, he told me that in the, in the copy that he submitted to Scout, I was actually number one. And then they went and that they tweak it a bit to they changed it a few times <laughs> tweak Sounds it and suddenly right, yeah. suddenly I'm number two you know so I think that Hall of Fame it's not the be all and end all because it, it what it does it rewards consistency more than real high finishes you know you could you could create a team now right and for the next five seasons if you finished exactly five thousandths in every for the next five seasons you'd probably find yourself at the top of the Hall of Fame, even though you'd never even had a top 1,000 finish, you know, because it rewards consistency. You see people up there, and some of them have only got like one 1,000 finish or whatever, but what they haven't got is a really bad season, you know, so it just encourages people to play bloody template the whole time. So the this was, that, that, was the next, that was the next point I was going to make. Loads of people start a new account to kind of wipe their kind of shit history. Yeah, exactly. And then they start playing again. So they just add a new email address to the game, wipe all the old history, and then say, I'm going to get myself on the Hall of Fame. Yeah, well, it's crazy, isn't it? Because a season, a season from like five or six years ago where you've just learned the game or whatever is pretty bloody irrelevant, really, isn't it? To the way, yeah, it still counts on the Hall of Fame. So that is crazy. crazy but uh, yeah. I'll play the clip though. Um... In the meantime, guys, I'm just going to play the quick embarrassing clip because I did promise you, Nick, and I think I've got out of it for long enough. So I'll play the Tom clip. So while he's Hall of Fame number one in the world, I'll show you what happened. He was our first guest ever on Net That Hall, and there was a bit of a kind of tumbleweed moment, they call it, Nick. Definitely our most popular member of the Net That Hall crew, and you can definitely be our fifth crewmate now going forward. <laughs> Definitely be our fifth crewmate now going forward. Hello, darkness, my old so, just while we're here as well, guys, so please do continue. So, please do continue to hit like and subscribe if you're new. Um, but yeah, that's a highly embarrassing moment. But don't worry, I think your clip will be okay. And we're going to get one of Hibbo. There were some comments earlier about that the first half of the Everton uh, Burnley game was as boring as your background, Hibbo. What's How long's that game got to go? Is that game nearly finished yeah. now? It must be, yeah. I couldn't stand another fucking goal from him. Um, no, 76 minutes, still free. Oh, one. Jesus Christ. So wait, he'll wait till the 93rd minute and then he'll go and fucking score, won't he? He will. Like, he Luka will. like Lukaku the other day. Always winds me up. You can sort of see it coming, can't you? And uh, you get that all yeah, the time. No. I thought I, like I, I almost two, stopped watching that he, Chelsea game because I knew he was going to get a, another goal at the end. I think he had two shots and he scored both. Lucky, I so. I was quite lucky yesterday because he a lot did, of people yeah, have got did. Jota, and I was a bit worried about Jota yesterday. And then as soon as uh, um, Leeds got that player sent off, I thought, "Oh fuck, here we go! We're going to get those points." 
I was. But he should have. He probably. He probably should have got loads of points. Three yeah. assists, the Mane tax. That's another reason I should wild card because I've got that prick Simic asset sitting there blocking me from Jota and. Out of interest, I'm wondering, you know, on FPL Twitter, obviously, we've talked about some of the big names like um, Late Riser and obviously there's the likes of kind of Andy, Let's Talk FPL, another content maker and FPL General. So you kind of ever curse your luck that I guess your biggest rank, so it's five years, the incredible years of 2010, 2015, they were almost before the Twitter boom. And nowadays you kind of see the likes of, say, Late Riser and Bakar and they're like kind of celebrity accounts, um, whereas... The record you have to me, it seems like you should be Hall of Fame number one, too. So, you know, like, does that bother you? I guess that you almost like no. just a couple of years before the boom, like, you could be a celebrity and you could have hate mail and love mail coming your way. Yeah, kind of. Well, I did that blog for a year and then I um, started my own website and I did that for about a year and then I started getting pretty sick of it, to be honest. It's like, it's I raised a lot of money for, I did actually, I put a private area in there to raise money for charity and we raised like, hell of a lot i raised about five ten thousand pounds wow. i think for a couple of charities but i think one of my wild cards i made it private and set up this members area and it's incredible the amount of people that came in but it made, made me feel uncomfortable and i thought i wouldn't wouldn't like to charge people do you know what i mean it was like put the pressure on me and i, I just didn't enjoy it and after about a year of doing the website I started getting sick of it. You know, it's all right when I was having a good week, but when I had a bad week, it was hard. And I think writing was a lot harder, you know, because mine was basically writing and it was um, hard work. I think a YouTube channel like Andy's got would be much better. 200K you know, um, subs, right? It's insane. I, um, he's got a new channel now, a health channel. I was watching that the <laughs> other day. It's um, pretty good. You know, he's going on about how he used to be 30 stone and... Um, giving all these tips out, etc. It's nice. really good, you know. So um, he's done really well, hasn't he? So I asked him if he was coming to the FCAs, but I think he's going to be in Ireland um, the weekend before when the international games are, England, Andorra, I think. And he's probably going to have headed back by then. So it's a shame, but the FCA voting actually ended yesterday, Nick. So we have an even shorter show today because there was no plugging of any voting. But I just want to say thanks to everyone ah. who did vote. So we do appreciate that. Um, Hey, but I know you want to ask a little bit about the content. So I know Nick, you mentioned your website. Uh, time <clears> so ju just, just, just to touch on that, like so, obviously you had the blog. You published an ebook back in 2016. Believe it or not, I actually bought your ebook. I um, a lot of people bought that ebook. I tell you, I made I mean, thousands out of that book. It was incredible. Uh, I, I, bought, I couldn't I bought believe how many people bought it. It was the first book in FPL, from what I understand. It was, it was a pretty basic sort of a thing, wasn't it? But back then, I suppose it was seem to help people but like my question really on that is like do you enjoy writing and say at the time when you were writing the book I, did you have any kind of aspirations to say like write for like a big publication like scout or were you kind of happy just doing it for yourself and being like kind of totally unhappy? um i had plenty of offers but i turned them all down and i've right. like i said it was only really for fun for me i mean i only started the whole thing was to record my own thoughts and to help my own thought processes you know but it became hugely popular I, you know from that rank you can understand why everyone was like following on that again, everything. <laughs> and um you know those sort of two fat but 2017 i had enough of it you know and I, I sort of wound it all up before twitter and everything came along but um i had other things going on you know i was making a shed load of cash on betfair and um I saw today you were talking about, um, well, not someone in the Twitter questions when they come later, they mentioned the famous, I think, gambler and their kind of concept of value. And you seem to know that player. And I saw you pulled out an old book and it looked like horse betting as mm. well. I don't know. But I'd love to hear a little bit about your betting background when we get to that. So I don't know if yeah. this is the perfect time to talk about that. Unless do you have any final thoughts before we ask about your life outside of FPL. Do you have any thoughts on these four top 1Ks that you would share? Like, was there anything else that... You think, I guess, you did differently now that you've delved deeper again? No, it's exactly the same. You know, and like I said, it was only, only what was in the book, really, and what that screenshot you put up before, you know, it's just like ABC mm. FPL, really. I mean, I don't know what makes... It's like chess, you know. I play a lot of chess, and um, it's hard to know what makes one person better than another, isn't it? You just don't know, really. But um, I... 
maybe I should have changed, but I've just kept doing the same things I was doing then. They just don't um, haven't worked so well in the last few years, whether it's luck or whether it's, um, you know. But I think this season it's kind of similar kind of environment to the years that I did well, you know, with the big strikers. Big strikers. Uh, big, uh, the big strikers is a real difference, isn't it? Like, you know, when you're looking yeah, at, say, De Bruyne is... You know, he, he doesn't nearly rank on the premium conversation compared to like Ronaldo and Kane Lukaku and mm. stuff like that. So it, it is nearly like a bit of a kind of throwback season, I think, in a way. Yeah, and it makes money in that more important again, doesn't it? It was the last few seasons I've like built up a big lot of money and everything and there's been nobody to spend it on. Uh, last year, people know. who had a 107 million team value, they had 2 million in the bank. I could get the same. Yeah, exactly. Some million. some weeks I had like five million in the bank. It was, it was crazy. crazy numbers. There was so much value. There was Gundogan, Suchek. Players were performing um, at all levels. I guess it will be interesting to see whether anyone goes for free premium strikers at some point this season. Mm. Everyone talks about Salah, Lukaku, and Ronaldo. I wonder if we'll see a kind of Kane, Lukaku, and Ronaldo at some point. I do wonder. There'll be times when you want Kane. I think at various stages, won't it? Maybe not when he just had his first game with no shots or touches in the box for the first. And that time. was shocking. Did you see the XG for <laughs> Tottenham yesterday? In the first no. half, it was zero. So the team was about Point zero point zero five or something. No, but look, see, 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 Kane. See the way Kane started the season. It's that is Kane. Kane starts slow whenever he, like he hasn't really had a pre-season, and that's why no. I was kind of a bit surprised by the lit razor move because I thought mm. any Spurs fan I know would basically tell you he starts slow. It takes time to get up to speed of fucking match practice. Stay away from him for a while. It took, but I it think... took him years to score a goal in August. In didn't August, I? Yeah, I never... do you remember? Last year was mm. an exception, not the rule. Yeah. And sure, he hardly kicked the ball because he thought he was going to. He wanted the same for Man City. Like he didn't want to stay at Spurs for God's sake. But without Stan, I mean, he, he, you know, it's even hopeless. worse. Yeah. They're a one-trick team, aren't they? Really, if, if you need Sun to be firing for Kane to get anything, and vice versa, probably. Be away. It's tough times, but um, what do you? I guess just to go on that stuff about outside of FPL. So I know you're keen in chess, as you say, and you do some distance running. You were mentioning marathons to us earlier. Um, you obviously did a casual five k at five thirty this morning before the stream. So it'll be interesting for the listeners, I think, to hear a little bit about outside of FPL about your interests. Yeah, well, what are they? What were we talking about just now? Betfair was the one that I was doing quite a lot. I was heavily into that from about 2000 to about 2015, I suppose. Right. Trade it, trading uh, trading prices on cricket and rugby and stuff on the betting exchange. And mm -hmm. um, I was doing really well on that. I made a blooming quite a lot of cash. I can't do it. I made too much money, but they put the maximum premium charge on me and I can't do it anymore. So. I was going to say, it's interesting, <laughs> isn't it? The betting sites ban you. Like my friend got banned on Sky when you earn money. Like if you win, yeah. then you're good. They literally delete you. Well, the high street shops are terrible. I mean, they they ban you really quick, you know, like Labbrooks and all those ones. And you can't really win for very long on those. But the betting exchange is different because you're it is different, eh? betting it's against other people. people. Right? Yes. <laughs> but I, um, I, I, I had a huge advantage because um, back then there was hardly anybody in New Zealand doing it, you know, in the early years. It was like take, having a money tree in the back garden. You'd um, Because of, of the delay, people would be watching a test match in New Zealand and all the people trading on it would be in the UK. And I'd be there live. Now watching, and, um, <laughs> and I'd hit the button. I'd, I'd sit there with my finger on the button, waiting for a wicket. As soon as there's a wicket, I'd like put like thousands down there, and they wouldn't take the money away in time because they they didn't see the wicket until about I mean, seven or eight seconds after I'd taken their money. And it's like, where's my and, money going? You know, and and because nor normally a TV and there'd be a wicket. <laughs> normally, they normally they suspend the market when there's like a yeah. big, you know, yeah. like a big they, action like that, like a wicket. They kept, um, they kept increasing the. When it started, there was no um, the countdown, and then they put it up to three seconds, and I think it went to five seconds, didn't it? But um, you could still beat it in New Zealand. People were slow to take their money away. You could, you could still get them even with a five second uh, delay. So it was crazy, but then gr gradually. Um, other people started doing it, etc., and the edge kind of slowly vanished. But when once you've made two hundred and fifty k, then you get slapped with a 
400 uh 40 percent premium charge so they take 40 percent of your profits away so yeah, i was quite happy with 20 like percent once it got to 40 percent i thought it's just not worth it plus it was getting like harder i mean i could sit here today and like uh, spend eight hours like really concentrating and probably make a hundred quid or whatever but i just can't be bloody ass this fucking it, it's pointless. a lot of work <laughs> It was the cricket like was tennis. shocking. All my, all my mates would be going out playing golf or whatever, and I'd have to spend the entire day sitting there like this with my mouse, waiting it for a wicket. It gets you when you're inside, and, and you're in a beautiful and, country. Lord and some days, some days there wouldn't even be a bloody wicket, or you'd press the button, and then the <laughs> umpire would overrule it, and you wouldn't make money. And uh, bloody hard work, you know. But I was doing that for doing that for years, and like FPL, I went on FPL to kind of take my mind away from that sort of thing you know i wasn't wasn't interested in making money out of fpl you know the only money i made was money i gave to charity etc yeah but, five um, to ten thousand which is crazy because we've donated and been part of donating about just two hundred dollars and we've obviously not even gone a full season yet we started like midway through last season so hopefully we can give more away we call ourselves like the fpl robin hoods i don't know if you know nick um we kind of say something we're trying to do is people can donate to charity send us a screenshot yeah and we'll do like a 15 20 minute like zoom call with them to give them advice about their team like an rmt and any one of the four of the co-hosts who's available will do that because we're not looking to kind of monetize like we're not in it for ourselves we just we're it, here because we're passionate about it it makes a great hobby doesn't it like and it's mm. good fun doing streams and like just being like even the ego thing, you know, of like being on the show, etc. It's all kind of good stuff. But I think if you try and do it full time, it becomes more like a more like a job, and then it, like the enjoyment goes and pressure grows, and then you have that like hurt as well. Then you have three or four bad weeks, and it bloody hurts you. And like, yeah, I mean, how long can people get go for calling themselves like An celebrities? <laughs> When they're not even getting in the top hundred k, I mean, how how long can people get away with that type of thing? No, but you you, you can you can actually yeah. work for the fantasy <laughs> Premier League side because they call everybody a fucking expert. Yeah, you're an expert. You know, you know one of the experts they had. He's like had like four top million finishes. Like, yeah, like yeah. all kinds of stuff. But <laughs> but they all went on at him though, didn't they? Because he he recommended San Maximum. Sim I think. I, and San Maximum then, scored. But then he actually did get some points. So like, <laughs> yeah, but it's still yeah. remember what we say: right decision, wrong outcome; wrong decision, right. Yeah, outcome. true. Yeah, remember, it's, it's, there's a lot of luck involved. <laughs> but it's just supposed to be a bit of fun, though, isn't it? And it like gets taken so blooming seriously. So you'll be happy to know, Gray is off. Um, FPL tips, Harry, he says that Gray's off. Chris Wood is also off. Uh, well, hopefully that's the last goal the prick gets for a while. It's the 90th minute. I think it's done. Which which prick? Can you I thought I thought with DCL, D I thought anything he got would have been like assisting DCL. You know, that's why people got him, wouldn't it? Not to bloody score a goal. Not to score a goal. We'd love to ask you about your team before we go into the Twitter questions and then the live Q and A. So I've actually somehow I'm not cracking. So this is right what now. I'm talking about. I'd like to see this myself because I haven't had a chance to look at it yet. It's a bloody disaster. I mean, that Webster business pissed me off. Everyone else got like six or seven points from their Brighton defender. At least I get got one point. Though. At least you've got Sanchez. You could have got yeah, double got Sanchez. Though, but um, that's another thing. For wild card, I get the Wolves keeper in. I think. So, so I like so. Hopefully, he's still four point five. Um, no, he's no, he's five, is he not? Is he? He's only four point five in. Ah, oh, maybe. He is. Oh, fan team, yeah. He, yeah. They, yeah. Fan There's so many good prices in so many other formats. I think FPL released too early this season. Um, they, they've kind of just rushed it out and some players are priced a bit strange but I yeah they made him a big mistake with Mane uh, pr yeah. price Mane completely out the bloody game didn't they that's, yeah, that's sort of much. that's what forces everyone to have the same team because they don't give you enough options I mean I think that every single player in FPL should be an option you know so they should price people so that you want them and and most people most of players in the league you wouldn't go near them would you because they're all blooming they should add points Not for other stuff drive. as well, right? Like, it would be interesting if stuff like passing or tackles were included in points, like how yeah. saves are, because then maybe some CDMs are a bit more interesting. Um, the, the bonus is a bit a, random. They need a new category, I think, for 
even for defenders they could have like central defenders and wing backs and make them a separate category or def yeah, defensive midfielders and reward them for tackles like you said or something like that but so anyway you were 81k team, by the way so overnight i don't know what you well, are now i was 60k before the week started i was thinking i'd okay. get back to 60k but now i've only got ailing's point coming on for calvert lewin oh, so i'm gonna well, lose in the cast both got bench just for the podcast listeners nick do you mind reading out the team from a goalkeeper and the rest of the 11 well i've got sanchez in goal i've got trent Shaw and Webster, who's now injured. Uh, Salah, Rafinha, Ben Rama, and Greenwood. Pretty uh, template there, isn't it? At least they're all right. And then uh, Calvert Lewin, Ronaldo, and Antonio up front. Gilmore, Simakas, and Ailing on the bench. So this is a problem with um, it's all very well going for this like cheap bench. But the trouble is, when you do get a couple of players injured, it then immediately puts you under pressure to wild card. So, I mean, I can take out Calvert Lewin and replace him with Bamford. You can start Ailing instead of Antonio. Yeah, well, I will be starting Ailing anyway instead oh, of Webster. Oh, Webster. Oh, damn. Okay. Sure. So he'll be starting, right? And then I can replace Calvert Lewin with Bamford. And then I have to play Gilmore instead of Antonio. That's if I don't take a hit. But I could take a hit and either take out, which is what I was thinking of anyway, and take out Webster or Antonio. So I could swap Webster to somebody like, actually, if I take out Calvert-Lewin, oh, I see, I see, I see every bit of adversity is also an opportunity. See, I'm glad so. you say this. Every challenge, every problem, it is a genuine opportunity. And I'm Some starting people... to see, an, I'm looking at this, I'm starting to see an opportunity here because Calvert-Lewin, I believe, is more expensive Maybe, it, how much is Calvert-Lewin? I can't remember. 8.2. Yeah, good. So he's more expensive than Bamford, right? Yes, you can And I was looking yesterday, I was looking yesterday at taking out Antonio and Webster. Yeah. But one thing putting me off was because I could, I could only afford a four point, a, a defender up to 4.8 million, someone like um, White. But if I yeah. take out Calvert-Lewin for Bamford, Semedo, I've, got enough, I've got enough for Semedo or for uh, Tierney. Oh, Tierney, I like the look of that one. What about and, Tommy um, 4.5, could be interesting. Yeah, I haven't really looked at him yet, to be honest with you. I'm not, he was not meant sure to be if he's attacking. He did take a good shot, though, didn't he? It he was, was a flying body, yeah. <laughs> it was a flying body. But, crazy. yeah, I think you might be right. I don't think I need to wild card here. I don't I think, think looking at this. I think all I'm going to do I is, take, is get rid of Calvert-Lewin and get rid of Webster, keep Antonio on the bench. Yeah. Play I'm going to lose. I'm going to lose point one or whatever. But when this sort of shit happens, there's not much you can do about it, to be honest. And and it's points over money. I always say this. So I've maybe been... that's what that's pretty what um, Blake Riser's doing, isn't it? That's why he's taking Calvin Lewin out for Bamford because he's just gone straight for it. He thought because you know the other. But I don't know why. I still don't understand why he's done it tonight. I mean, that's just bad play, isn't it? I'm but, but, sorry, I guess, but I guess he's thinking. <laughs> he must be thinking. You know what? Uh, Leeds don't play in the midweek, but his other players play in the Champions League, right? Yeah, that's but the still, thing. but there's still no point doing a transfer tonight. It's just what's because nothing's changing in price. So why why do it? It doesn't make any sense. My friend did unless you wild card him. He was just angry. It's the rage transfer. Right? Yeah, so that's a bad transfer, yeah. isn't it? If it's an angry angry transfer, is a bad transfer. So if he's done that, that's not good. Unless he is what unless he knows that he's wild carding, what's the point of swapping them tonight? I just want to I just want to touch on something, and, from... Unless he unless he wants a defender tonight. Perhaps there's a defender he wants that's going up in price tonight. I but, just um, like I want to touch on something just from the, the last week. Like so say like we're talking about Ronaldo. I was kind of surprised that I suppose the Twitter kind of community was like overly cautious on Ronaldo and everybody was kind of questioning his minutes and whether he was going to start. I kind of thought it was a bit of a circus. Like, what, what was your take on that? Well, I, I went onto my stream and the first thing I said was like, it's Ronaldo, you know, and it is. People were like trying to analyse it. I saw the black box of Mark, etc., doing all for this an analysis. Hour. Yeah, for an hour. And you think, well, it's just Ronaldo. He's the best bloody player in the world, just yeah. about. The you just get him in. Returns. This is like Star Wars or Lord of the Rings. It's like 
and they're like, will he start? And, and I was like, you know, they've got VIPs flying in from all over the world just to watch him. There's no it's way the he's first not, time a member of the Glazers no family way he's not has been there since 2016. Exactly. Or exactly. There's no way he's going to be on the bench. <laughs> it's more and he's more was on the crowd. He, 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 he just scored two goals against Ireland, didn't he? he did, I. One was in the last minute, so he's obviously fit. Both were in the last both, and Both, both were in the last five minutes. And why not get him? You know, it's just, just for, I, I said that I was getting him we'll just for the occasion. In 15 but, years of playing FPL. Yeah, exactly. I thought even if he blanks, I can live with that. But I would, wouldn't be able to live with not getting him and him getting a hat trick or something, you know. And uh, By the way, Gabe is upset. Crazy. Just because, um, he's saying the credible pundit said he wouldn't start. Ben Dinnery last week said he wouldn't start. I think a lot of people said a lot of things. Um, it is true. Yeah, but they didn't know. None of them knew. Well, and that's what know. Know. I said it was a reasonable conversation. But what I will say, is, uh, Gabe, is if there wasn't an international break, and there wasn't two weeks for like the whole community to overthink. I think as a community, we can be guilty sometimes of when there's a slow news day, we just kind of keep talking and then we go around in a full circle. So like you'll say he's going to start, then he won't start, then he will start. Obviously, every team's different. Some teams, it wasn't worth a hit to get him. We said Bruno did quite well, right? And the replacements for um, Bruno didn't do so well. So overall, if you owned Bruno and captained him and didn't get Ronaldo, you probably still got similar points to a Ronaldo captain. But I think for the three of us, I would agree that to me, it felt like there was a lot of over analysis because it was an international break and it was Ronaldo. I just want to say, I just want to say, I have never ever in my life seen something as overthought as yeah. well Ronaldo was going to start. I swear to God. Yeah. Like, and see even the analysis in Black Box, I watched it. I don't agree with. They were talking about, are United going to be able to cross a ball for Ronaldo? But like, does Ronaldo not score with his left and right foot? I, I, like Ronaldo can score a bad cross because all you have to do is stand the ball up and he can get, he's got the biggest leap anybody's ever seen. They just pour the ball in. And I just thought the whole analysis of like Ronaldo, I thought, like, you're not talking about some kind of butt part player here. Like this boy, this 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 boy, you, you you can genuinely call him one of the best players of this generation. And I just no, I disagree. I don't think it's hindsight Gable bias says at all. Hindsight bias no, it's, it's not. It's nothing it's to not, do with hindsight. It's, 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 it's not hindsight bias at all. We were saying it's, it for two weeks. We were saying it for two weeks. We were saying it for two weeks. And just because these kind of like, like some expert and kind of player start and says, oh, I don't think he's going to start. We all disagreed with that. We says, well, why, why, like, why Your else? Your face all the thousand words that day. But I didn't, I didn't agree at all. I thought he was always going to start. Because yeah, like, obviously. He, he was training on the Tuesday. wasn't in training. There was okay. Let me tell you one last thing. There was, he was even training a on the Tuesday. League, but there was, was even a on the Tuesday. League. There was a credible leak that Cavani didn't go with the rest of the squad to the hotel as well. So even the night before, like news was starting to get out. Agreed. Mm. But like I kind of think, see the second right. Right? Fred, I was, Fred didn't travel either, did he? Was, uh, they had the hotel guest list, and um, they weren't on it. I was surprised. See, whenever like we seen him and say training kit on a Tuesday, I was surprised that like kind of good FPL managers didn't call in their hole or Ronaldo's going to be on the bench. Yeah, but because- a, lot, a, a lot of them did sneak him in. Now they all said for two they weeks they weren't going to get him, the and then the last last. Then somebody came on who reckoned they was in the know, didn't they? And they they come on and said, "Oh, Ronaldo's starting and he's on penalties," <laughs> and they're all going, "Yeah, exactly." Like it could have been anybody, couldn't it? But they're like, you just they go, "Oh, if it fails. We, we we better get him in now, then." You know, so like they all use that as an excuse to get him. But um, most of them did get him in the end. I but think. what I will say is, it is still team specific. So I think if oh, certain crap. people were going to captain someone else and they didn't need to take the hit to get him, it makes oh. sense. But I don't think it's then hindsight bias that the people who could get him without too much damage went for it. Um, I saw some really credible patient managers take minus eights to get to him. Um, it, it it was a risky move. I think that's what I would say. So this early in the season, it was risky. But I don't think know, it was it risky. Was risky. It was risky both sides. I think it was more yeah. risky not to get him. I looked at his EO number and I was convinced just on the transfer trend numbers going up that his EO would be considerably higher in the top, say, 300k than Bruno. I knew people yeah. would captain Salah, they would captain Antonio, they probably wouldn't captain Bruno. That was my view. And it ended up being 115% EO for, I think, Ronaldo and 35% for Bruno. So that was a big swing considering Bruno started the week at over 50% ownership. Mm. Ronaldo was at 0%. Um, 
I, I like Gabriel's debate. He's saying it's hindsight bias to say having doubts was overthinking. Um, no, no, I don't think having doubts was overthinking. I think no, I'm not if your team that. didn't need to buy him, then it makes sense not to buy him. But I think on Twitter, the fact that there was a two-week break, it means people are prone to just talk and talk and talk and talk about the game to the point where, yeah, we over any international break, as FPL managers, we will overthink most decisions, Ronaldo or otherwise. That's just my view. And yes, there was credible people who said he wouldn't start, but from the start, I said he'll get a brace. So just on that note, this is the first stream since the weekend. And Nick, I've been saying for two weeks to everyone that all the conversations over the entire international break will be academic when Ronaldo gets his brace. Have I not been saying that, Hibbo, for like three weeks now? And well, it, thing. Word, it will be academic because he'll but get just, a break. Just, just to kind of pull back Off the hindsight bias, just, 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 just to pull back the hindsight bias, we had this argument in the WhatsApp chat. Yeah. Before, before the game. Before, the, before game, the game. I said, off the, the bench, you'll get a break. <laughs> before the game, and I basically, like, I was like, people were like, what about this analysis? Of, and I basically says, I don't need to see no fucking analysis in Ronaldo. I'm 37 years old. I've been alive for fucking all of Ronaldo's career. I don't need to see analysis. I just need to buy Ronaldo. And like, I know, and... <laughs> I, but I know me and Gabe kind of had a kind of a tete tete about that in the WhatsApp. But like, there's a times I kind of think where like, I just think I have to do something. And on a given week, I don't need to watch Black Box. I don't need to read an article. I just need to buy a player. And that's the way I felt about Ronaldo. I kind of thought to myself, Newcastle are terrible. Ronaldo's going to score points. It's a special occasion, wasn't it? Rare it was. event. It's not normal FPL. You just something you just have to do. But uh, I was a bit worried though I, during the game. First half was shit. He, he, he said he was he, nervous. He, he admitted he was. He, you could tell the way he was playing. And then thank God he got that goal. If it had only been one minute of um, injury time at the end of the first half, he wouldn't have got it, would he? And then uh, it could have all been different. But um, out of interest, um, everyone's talking about Mikel Antonio. Obviously, he's in your team. I know you've said you're going to bench him potentially and not wild card to sell Calvert Loon and Webster. What what do you think for most people? So like if they don't have like well, an ailing on the bench, if they've got like a really bad bench player, let's say they've got a Brownhill, what would you do? Would you sell him in that scenario? I would have sold him this week. I was going to sell him because um, they've got Europa League. The fixtures aren't as good as Bamford's got, et cetera. Um, okay, it costs a bit more to buy back, but not a lot more. I mean, I got him for 7.5, I think. What is he now? 7.9? He might already be 7.8. Oh, 7.9, is he? So he's going to drop a couple more anyway. So it's not going to be a huge increase to buy him back. And uh, the fixtures aren't fantastic. And no. uh, the, the way his price went last night, it depends how much fast his price moves, but it was moving bloody quick yesterday. And um, there are alternatives, aren't there? So, mind you, it's only really Jimenez and um, Bamford, isn't it? Now, hello, people. Calvert Lewin, people, Calvert Lewin's out, so people, people might be trying to get their Pookie Ronaldo or the Kiaki. There's, no, but there's people going for Puki. There's people going for um, Dennis. There's there's some random. Yeah, well, I wouldn't be doing friends. all that. <laughs> I'd rather keep Antonio over and do that. I don't know if I want Bamford actually because I've got Rafinha already, but. Um, that's the issue. So I'm looking at Ben Rama to Rafinha and part of me is kind Jim, of thinking... Jimenez is, hasn't scored yet, has he? So so I could do Tony to him, though. Tony against Wolves, Jimenez against Brentford. I don't know. I feel like Tony, two free transfers is better the following week, going by your principles. I'm probably going to keep him now anyway because I'm going to have to deal with Calvert-Lewin. So I don't think I am wildcarding now, but I'm going to probably just do Calvin, Lewin and Webster for another hit. Okay. But there's too many hits. Like I said in that thing, I only took four hits all season in that year I finished in the top. I'm already on my second hit if I do another one this week. And it's only a game week four, game week five. So I could walk. I mean, it's not much difference between wildcarding now and wildcarding in game week seven, probably, but. But do you think do you think that's the really ideal, ideal time to wild card? Do you think game week sevens? Well, I was, I was I was planning not to. I was I'm planning to keep it as long as possible until like a shit show happens and this kind of crap happens to my team, you know. But uh, <laughs> I think I can get away without using one this week. I think you can I... get away with. I think you can get away with because Ailing's playable. Gilmore might mm. play this week. Yeah, apparently he didn't play because of international duty, apparently. Yeah, same makes that. sense. Maybe Mount as well. Maybe that's the reason he didn't get any minutes too, right? It could be, unless they're saving him for the Champions League. 
I did worry but, about um, that. It was strange. Even FPL Tips Harry was surprised, I guess. Was, that didn't get I was surprised minutes. Mount's so popular because I've had him before and he's never done shit for me, to be honest with I you. I think they, maybe, they, maybe they fought more because of Lukaku. I don't know, but... It's an, uh, it seems early to get him. I think my view is I'd rather have a double up of the Chelsea defence. Well, that's what I'm planning to. Um, just want Lukaku in for Ronaldo and two Chelsea defenders, don't you? One, one would be James because of his attacking returns. And yeah, someone he's like got to be one of them, yeah. Christensen like or Rudiger. James didn't and, start uh, the last match, but did he? Chelsea midfield's a bit of a blooming... Um, no, it's just didn't. too many of them, aren't there? Too many yeah, Chelsea yeah. midfielders. There is, there is. Um, what do you think about? Should we go to the Twitter Q and A and then? No, I think you're gonna stick on. We've got. I think we've I've got, got some key key back, back. But um, I think Antonio, we've got some good questions here. Oh, do you? I think okay, Antonio you is fifty-fifty, isn't it? It's, it's, there's, case, there's a good case for taking him out, and there's also a good case for keeping him. So there's no real right answer with that one. I think. Mm. I don't think. I don't think whichever one you choose, you're not making a mistake. You know, I mean, it uh, might one it, one it turn out better than the other, but none of us know. Which is the right move, really? Do we? Yeah, like I say, I think it's fifty-fifty. So, like, answer me this, Nick. So, like, where do you stand at the minute on say, like, Aki popped off at the weekend? So, like, in terms of the premium situation, are you like very much in the kind of two premium camp? Yeah, very much. I, I, I think I'm going to have Ronaldo until Lukaku game week seven, and just swap them over. I don't think I'll have both. I mean, the main thing with Ronaldo was people like, oh, don't get Ronaldo, he's got terrible fixtures. And I'm like, well, you only want him for the next three. Do you know what I mean? We only got him in for like the next three fixtures. I think he's got Villa at home in game week six, hasn't he? So um, you keep Ronaldo to win at least and then uh, swap them over probably. Maybe, maybe if he's really good, then uh, you can go with both up top. The but, fixtures um, get fair. The fixtures get fairly tight. I think. Are yeah, the league. shit. And uh, you know, he's probably gonna once he gets over that initial excitement of being back. You know, he's maybe he's gonna not be quite as prolific. You just don't know, do you? But um, you can see Lukaku is going. Lukaku is definitely going to be the one to own, isn't he? But you want Salah, I think. You want somebody in midfield, one of the premiums. And fitting three premiums in, it means you have to get that prick grey, doesn't it? So uh, <laughs> it worked this week, doesn't they're it? They're the big winners. They're the big winners this week. The ones that got three premiums and stuck grey in just because they couldn't afford anybody else. And now they've bloody hit the jackpot. Bastards. <laughs> <laughs> where, where do you see the value in the game? Nick? So um yesterday you actually put out a tweet I think about the price range under seven point five million. And he said mm. there's kind of under 15 defenders that have 20 plus points. And there's actually five midfielders in that same bracket, maybe six. So do you think this trend will continue that the, I guess, under 7.5 midfielders will be significantly below the defenders? I think the trouble with the midfielders is it's hard to predict when they're going to get points. And some of them are pretty sketchy and unproven, aren't they? Like Trey Ori, the ones that people are bringing in have got no real record of being good at FPL, have they? I mean, Gray, Rafinha, yeah. Gray got points today, but he's like one out of 10, you know, whereas the defenders, people like Rudiger or Diaz, you know, the City defenders, etc. Conceal. Exactly. They're just so much more reliable. You know, you're going you're gonna to get a steady stream of points, whereas midfielders, they might get 15 one week and then you get five blanks in a row, you know, and yeah. that, so they're, they're harder to own because you tend to get rid of them before they is that all the people getting it. excited about Mobuemo from Brentford? And I'm thinking, for 5.5, I could have Rudiger. I oh, thought that Buemo. was crazy in, crazy in game we won. I thought that was madness, you know, because they played against 10 men Arsenal. Didn't, well, not 10 men, maybe, but they didn't have any strikers. Or no, that was the game, game after. All the shit first three Arsenal and, games um, were like the worst. One thing. game, you know, and uh, they all were over that Brentford player. You know, he was a classic sort of score in the first week and never score again type player, wouldn't he? And um, they're all over him. But I mean, you get that every season. But uh, yeah. I think Cancelo. I, I think Cancelo is a keen interesting one because, like, we're looking at Man City defence, and I know normally they're quite rotation heavy. But I think he started maybe every game so far. He's obviously got that kind of sus threat. And like when I look around teams in my money leagues, nobody owns Man City defence. Nobody owns Man City defence. So who, and I'm ki- who, who's his um, replacement? Is it Walker? 
Well, is he playing right back now? Because he's he a can... left. He can play both. Has, he can play, has he play, played both sides? Has he played with Walker in the same team this season? I think so. Yeah, I think he's so... played left back um, in games ahead of Zinchenko. I might yeah, be wrong. I mean, he can also play right back ahead of Walker. That's the thing. So he can kind of do both. He's way more attacking when he plays left back, though. So I will if, say if that. If he's going to be semi nailed on, he's very good, isn't he? He's more exciting than Diaz if he's starting. Yeah. I'm Diaz is looking more startable, wouldn't he? He starts more Diaz, doesn't he? Yeah, he's more nailed. But even still, Laporte and Stones, they're there. So there's three of them competing for two places. So it's not like centre back is a given either, really. I'm kind of looking at Cancelo from like game week eight because I know from game week eight, man, said I start this kind of great run and like I'm targeting that period myself for kind of like a wild care because like everybody at the minute is talking about Chelsea. You boys are talking about Chelsea and double on the defence and I completely agree with that. But like part of me is thinking I want to kind of turn the corner and get on to Man City because Man City once he had a good run of fixtures. I think Cancelo's going to just fucking haul ass. Like, you know, he's just, he's one of these players. He gets an assist and he scores 12 points. Like, you know, it's, Thing is, we'll all have double Chelsea defence by then, won't we? So it's kind of—I suppose you can stick him in as well. But um, you, can do, you can do Trent, uh, Rhys James, Cancelo, oh, there's Trent and too. Yeah. <laughs> Would you ever get rid of Trent? When do Liverpool have bad fixtures? I'm never <laughs> selling Trent. Well, I'm, never, I'm, I'm never selling Trent. Never. And there's so, so, the argument is about like say like three premiums. And I seen somebody talking today about we'll have to see if we can go without Trent, and it's like. <laughs> You can't so he's made 20 chances this season. I think the second highest players in the Prem have made 10 chances. But if you go with Trent, Cancelo and James, that's quite it's expensive. quite expensive. And then it's, sec- it's sexy, but but it's, I think you're cutting yourself off from the likes of Greenwood when you do that, aren't you? Because you're gonna have to go down to the grey and people like that. But I think Greenwood and like Jota, like I don't think long term they're as nailed. So I think when no, there those two are. But, pain, but there's also people like Havertz and um, there is Sun as well. Zaha even. Someone said Zaha. Zaha yesterday. You know, once these other teams get good fixtures, there's other there midfielders field, that you're going to want probably. There's Although Torres, whether they can Odin, whether Torres. they can keep up with Cancelo or not is a different matter, isn't it? And uh I still remember going for Cancelo and Diaz and Stones did it. I remember going for, um, I think it was Ben Mee instead of Lowton. I remember Lowton did it. I remember I went for Zaha instead of Easy. I went for Ward instead of Mitchell. I don't know if this recalls anything to you, Nick, but last season, every time I spent more for the expensive player in every double game week, the budget fucking prick always did better. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and that's what's mind. happening. That's what's happened with Gray, isn't it, this week? So... Maybe, maybe you don't need seven point five mids. Maybe you can have a Smith Rowe or somebody in there, and that Gallagher, sort of price. Maybe? Yeah, Gallagher. There's quite a few at that sort of price range, and then it's you can have, um, you know, someone like Cancelo plus one of them is going to be seven point five and a four point five defender, probably, aren't they? It's, it's probably I, a better. I probably will, actually. It's I... probably a better combination. I think so, and they're both nailed. So that's why I didn't get Fernandez because I thought Greenwood and Sun would be a better combination than Fernandez and it a four point five or whatever. Even though one of his shots was like off target, but I don't think I've got a theory. Good. I've got a theory about Greenwood. I think he must be doing something to that ball because every shot he has, the keeper spills it. Every single one, his goals and his assist, and I think he's like doing snooker shots on or something. He's like screwing the ball. You know, he's like doing, putting some kind of spin on it because the keepers just can't I mean, hold it. I mean, it's low in spinning or whatever it's doing. And um, every single one's been spilled by the keepers. All three of his goals and the assist. So what all of them are Leeds, saveable. The what do you feel about these? Because you've got Rafinha, so that kind of puts you off Bamford a bit as a Calvert-Lewin or Antonio and, and I've got Ailing as well. And, uh, yeah. Defensively, they look shit. You know those um, ICT tables I do? Yeah, well, I, um, I, I put in this week's ones, and um, Arsenal have climbed up above Leeds now, and Leeds are like next to bottom. Oh, wow. For, their opponents have been having a field day. You know, they've got a terrible score. Obviously, they've got down to 10 men against Liverpool. They've got lots of injuries as well now, yeah. Uh, context, I think context is important because like, if you look, 
during that run they played United and during that run they played Liverpool and like mm-hmm. they they lost a man against Liverpool and like Manny looked as if he had about a hundred shots himself yesterday alone. Yeah. His his finishing was fucking atrocious. Like Manny could have scored a hat trick yesterday. But it could be second second season syndrome though, couldn't it? Could be. My other theory is that Leeds benefited from having no crowd last season because the manager like fired them up more than like the opposition were often fired up. And now that uh, everyone's like on an even footing, and I just I don't know. There's a lot of hype about Leeds because they're a big club, like they're huge in the seventies, weren't they? With Don Revy, etc. Like they're a big, big history, big club, big support base. And I'm wondering if they're kind of hyped up above where they really should be, you know. But um, we'll see. But I, I'm not sure I want three of them. Yeah, so I'm, I'm on Ealing. Like Road, Hibbo yeah. says, I mean, once uh, once the okay. fixtures change, it could be a completely different game, couldn't it? A bit like Arsenal once they played Norwich. Yes, just and, and that was the first time that back five had played together and it was the first mm. time certain CMs were there. Um, I think with the fixtures to come, I think Tottenham is the only what you could even call slightly difficult game between now and Liverpool in November. So no European midweek distraction. True. So you, like reckon, you reckon Leeds are, still, Leeds are still good, you reckon? Bamford did put in a good yeah. shot yesterday, didn't he? We've had yeah, a, I, he I think scored Bamford from... could be good. Um, I'm interested in Bamford, but... I'd I'm probably get him because there's no one else to go for, is there? But for Who me, it yeah, feels like a no-brainer. And mm. I guess Jimenez hasn't been popping. So I think it's Jimenez versus Bamford now. And that's a good time to kind of talk exactly. about the Wolves assets, right? Because people are going for the defenders like Semedo and Mar- Marcel or Marcao. But I don't I know. Think if, I, mean, I think Semedo is the one. He's so attacking. I know my, I know we're all going for Marcel because he happened to get the assists last week. But uh, I think Semedo long term is the one. And uh, I think Marcel's got competition as well for that spot. Is it Ait Nori? Al Nori, or whatever he's yeah. called, yeah. No, I but, think so. Um, I think a Wolves defender's okay, but I think if you were going to take a punt now and you were going to spend 4.9 million, I would be picking between, say, Semedo and Tierney. If you were going to spend 4.5 million, I'd be picking between Marcao and, like, White or Tommy Arsenal. Yeah. So I what, feel like that's what, where you would go. What, there were only two players from Arsenal yesterday who never had a shot in the entire game. One, one of them Garden, was White right? and the other yeah, was Odegaard. Garden, right? I know, I know. I, I watched okay. them. I was there live. Um, we took oh. 30 shots for the first time since like 2016 or 17. Um, it was the most shots ever taken under Arteta. Yeah. And it wasn't very clinical, but there was 30 shots, 10 on target, I think. Um, when you've got five players in the back line playing together for the first time and the whole 11 looks like it's only ever played together this one time with two days prep. They're going to lack I believe it was only 1-0. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. The, so I think Krul made some good saves. The stats are incredible. <laughs> that, that ICT index, Arsenal were right at the top. They got, for a conceded say, ones. Yeah, yeah. Mm. When the, and, and you know, at the end of the game, we actually uh, switched to a 4-3-3. There were some questions in the live chat about Saka. I've been saying I prefer Saka to Smith Rowe and God. I'd pay the extra million. What do you think of Pepe? Pepe? I like him, but my worry with him is he's at risk to Saka. So Saka could play right wing ahead of Pepe, or he could play left wing when Pepe plays right wing. Now, if um, Arteta ever chooses to play Laka up top, Oba will float into left wing, and I can't see Pepe keeping the right wing spot over Saka in that situation. Mm, so it's a difficult a... one. Like It's risky, yeah. Yeah, it is, I think, isn't it? But and I think when he's... Less, like when Saka, he's... Oh, is he seven and a half? Is he Pepe? Yes, yeah, so Pepe. Oh, well, he's gone down in price though. So I have looked at him as a Ben Rama replacement for a punt. So while everyone's doing Ben Rama to Rafinha, I thought, what if I did Ben Rama to um, Pepe and I bench Antonio for Ailing? Like, imagine Pepe pops for the next two or three games. Because as bad as Pepe has looked um, from an eye test point of view, from a statistics point of view, he has. I think he made six chances last game. He was alone. at the top. He was at the top of everything in <laughs> statistics. Yeah, yeah, his numbers look great. From an eye test point of view, I'm worried he could lose his spot when it comes. But we don't have European fixtures, so He's there's got, no reason why they yeah. won't start in that same formation. Maybe Smith Rowe and Odegaard rotate number ten, and maybe uh, Saka plays left wing and Pepe plays right wing every game. Maybe Lacko and Oba rotate striker. I, I just That's, feel like we don't know enough. Mm, it's very That's, difficult, isn't it? I looked all last week. Arsenal and it's just such a conundrum knowing which that, one that's what, that, that's what I was going to say about Pepe like like at seven and a half million if you're not a hundred percent sure but he's expect that minutes and we're, I know we're kind of hot and that it's like 
you're paying seven and a half million, you turn on your TV and you don't know if he's going to start. Maybe it wouldn't be for me. Do you know what kind of way? But mm. against Norwich, like, you know, it's a, I had him on a few fan teams. I know we, we don't talk too much about fan team in the channel, but I had him on a few fan teams because I don't fancy him now, I have to say. Hibbo, tell us where mm. you came in the free roll or has the game updated? Because I think you were in the like top 10 or some no, shit. Oh, I think I, I was free asked, roll, I always forget I, those things. I, I, yeah, I was asked, well, I, was, I was just checking there now when you, when you were chatting. I came. I came seventeenth and one. I came seventy fucking wow. hours. So I think I think I what? cashed for like thirty pounds. Nothing major, but it gives me a bit of play. Like you know, it's, no, thirty pounds. That's pretty good. Yeah, I'll take that all day for two it's free crazy. tickets. Like it's not too bad. Like exactly. Know, so. I, I, I thought the ticket we won was the real monster, and it was the, the small monster. No, oh, the Ben Dinnery ticket. I forgot to enter, so I won a ticket through the Twitter competition, and then oh, I didn't sure enter it in time because I was out. Yeah, yeah I was out. I think so. What day was it? Was it a Saturday? Saturday? Uh, you yeah, were I was at the Emirates. Yeah, I was at the, uh, yeah, yeah. I got off the train at like 12. I started drinking. I missed the deadline. I didn't enter my teams. But I had a one decent, I had a one decent money in the and real deal one if I had I entered that. You could have won the 9k sake. first place prize. Like no, no, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't have won that. I wouldn't have won that. Exactly. But just, we'll, 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 we'll touch on one kind of last point here before we move on there, I suppose, the Twitter questions. And it was basically like, so say like, pre-season we talked about Palace being kind of whooping boys and they haven't really looked that way and like like what do you think of kind of what do you think of Conor Gallagher and what, what do you think of Palace assets generally I think they look pretty good they were quite um look at how they restricted Tottenham this week you know they look a good side don't they really they've got good players I think um, there's a lot of question marks over the manager, but they've started pretty good I'll they? tell you what though in the Emirates there was Mitchell looked the good Emirates Mitchell, thing. Zaha and Gallagher and Eduardo too. Edward, you know, Edward. Edward, I, Edward, Edward was good now. You know, no, I, I think mean, Mitchell's a great option. He could be a bit of a right. trap, Edward, couldn't he? He could be a bit of a trap. I wouldn't go but near him at six point five. The good, no, good no, thing no. is we got we got three or four weeks where we can watch them, haven't we? Because you don't really want to buy them yet because they've got shit fixtures. I think, I think grey I mean, owners, yeah, grey owners can move to um, it, Gallagher it, come game nine or ten. It's gonna it's gonna be interesting to see. They better move to anybody because Grey will be about ten million by then after all the goals he's gonna score in the next few weeks. Um <laughs> but um what was I I forgot what I was saying now. Yeah I think they're all pretty good <laughs> options though. They're all good options. They've got Liverpool next week, haven't they? That's going to be really interesting because everyone's thinking, oh, Captain Salah, it'd be funny to see uh, Palace beat them, wouldn't it, next week? So it's going to be interesting to see how they get on. Well, people um, captain Kane this week against Palace. They were like, this is the only time you'll ever see Kane below 10% EO ever in the Premier League. It was his first game ever with zero shots or zero touches in the opposition box. Um, he does that a lot, doesn't he, in the easy wrong, games? Yeah. He's, he's very unreliable. Goes, uh, uh, I've captained him through many blanks through big, like, easy mm. games. Yeah, yeah. Didn't yeah, he play happened. Cardiff once and he got bloody one point? Or maybe that was Aguero. One of them did. <laughs> okay, all <we'll> do. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> so, if we go to the Twitter questions then, what are we thinking, guys? Twitter questions? I go for it. I'll Where can on. I see those? Oh, yeah, I'll let me put them on the, the screen. screen. It should come up on the screen, then you'll be able to make Oh, that's um, they're all the same. Quest, I saw those yesterday. Pretty much, they're all pretty much the same. Yeah, so we've got Jaskar in 32. Um, he's used the wild card during the inter international break. He brought in Christensen, he was benched. Oh, Antonio was got a red. Uh, got a <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Christensen was benched, didn't play. Um, FPL tips told me he was advising people buy Christensen for five mil. He got a lot of abuse after that. Um, Antonio red carded, Jota blank, Semedo squandered two big chances. He's quite dejected. Um, he probably got Ben Livermento off the bench. I don't know why he's complaining. He probably didn't know about DCL today, but um, has I he got DCL? He has has he? Uh, I, I don't know, but <laughs> I guess maybe he has Livermento for Christensen. You're right. On a wild card, I'd probably have Livermento. If you don't, Jaskaran, that's on you, mate. You should have had Livermento on your benches on a wild card last week. Um, but how do you not feel dejected? I actually spoke to a follower today and they said they had a wild card. They weren't too happy. It got quite a low number of points. What do you do from there? Because my view is a wild card isn't for one week and you should never judge mm. like week one and let it get you on tilt. They're a bit of a double-edged sword, aren't they, wild cards? They can just as easily stuff you up as they can yeah, do you well, you know. I've had that happen to me before. I've 
wild card of the team, and then like a week later, I wished I had my original team back. Because like we saw with all these injuries this week, you know, it, things can change just so damn quick. You know, four days ago I had the perfect team, I thought, and now it's stuffed. And that can happen, you know, you can wild card into all sorts of trouble if you're not careful. So um but Christensen, I don't know. Is he nailed? I don't really know. I think he'll play every seven or eight out of ten is the way it was framed. Because Gabriel, me. Gabriel's going to play, isn't he? Because he's still a pretty top-class defender. Yeah, or Thiago, you mean? Or Thiago? Uh... Yeah, Thiago. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. And he did quite well. Yeah, he did really well. But Gabriel, yeah, Arsenal player. He looks great. Um, top five centre-back in how the much, league. How much is he? Probably five million. But Thiago's... Um, I don't think he's going to go for him. I don't think he's nailed because he, no, he isn't. He's quite old as well. Is that well? Not quite old, but for football not, terms, not as old as Ronaldo, probably. Yeah, he's probably younger than Ronaldo. <laughs> Everyone going on about Ronaldo being old, and then you look at him and you think, "What the hell are they talking about?" The yeah. most ripped guy I've ever. It's FIFA, not like he's. he's it's not like he's fifty, is it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, there's some good times. Um, we have a question from GPage71 if you want to read it out here, both of the podcast listeners. Yeah, so this is uh, Ozzy Shirks, he's called. And this is like a serious question. Should I knee jerk and blow up this team with a wild card and maybe target the likes of Lukaku and Bamford? So just kind of reading from back to front for podcast listeners. Is Sanchez and Gold, Trent Arnold, Shaw, Samakas, Rafinha Greenwood, Fernandez, Salah, Ben Rama, Calvert Lewin, Antonio, Steele, Kuffel, White, and this boy's scared of that doesn't play up front. It's not an awful team. There's nothing wrong with it. If I was him, well, he should have done it last. If I was him, I'd do Fernandez and Calvert-Lewin out for Ronaldo and somebody else. And then there's mm. nothing wrong with it. Bench Antonio. Well, imagine it was Gray and Ronaldo this week with a Ronaldo cap. He can play um, White this week, can he? Or, um, I would play White this week. I know um, mm. people have talked about, like, oh, it's Burnley away. I don't like it. It's fine. Like... <laughs> I'm sorry, like, it, no hit is ever worth a might. Like, I'd rather have white plus four than whoever you're going to buy for that mm. same price point. If you're buying a premium, maybe, but there's no other 4.5 mil defender that's great. It's not a terrible fixture. Yeah, Burnley, Burnley away is not the end of the world. Burnley are going to be G- G's 3 0. You definitely wouldn't wildcard that team, would you? No, I wouldn't wildcard this team. I'm no, I wouldn't wildcard really that. No. Not even close. Like, I would probably just tell Calvert Lewin to Bamford, Calvert Lewin to Jimenez. I think, I think I he's Matt Fields. Like he's Matt Fields kick ass. He's Matt Fields. Like, yeah. even if he doesn't, even if he doesn't take Fernandez out, he's Matt Fields kick ass. Like, that's. I would just play <laughs> White instead of Simicas and sell Calvert Lewin. That's literally. You don't even I mean. need, you don't even need Ronaldo this week, do you? Who are they playing this week? At you wouldn't captain United. this week. It's a way to West Ham. No, he, it, could, uh, he could do he could do well against West Ham boys now. Come on, he could, but I'm going to be captaining Salah at home. I don't, I don't, I don't think I'd buy him this week if I didn't have him. I don't think I'd. We take always a hit said he was a free man. game week pick, like last week, this week, mm. and the following week. Yeah, exactly. At least I'm this is best fixture. Games, like. I think if you haven't got him now, then you just uh, try and ride your luck. And yeah, like you almost got him too early, I think. Because you can captain Salah in game week six when. Um, he plays Villa. And Villa's defensive numbers aren't too yeah. bad. You can play Brentford away, Salah captain. It's not the end mm. of the world. Just to go on to the live questions, because we're at like one hour 48. I know you didn't have a hard stop, but we don't want to keep you forever. So we will get through the Twitter questions and then get some live questions in. Um, so this was a FBL DGY boy 88. Two problems. He's only got one free transfer for next week. He still has Mares. So, A, is there any mid under 9.8 million that they should target? They're thinking Rafinha or Saw. So, it'd be good to get your thoughts on um, initially whether it's Rafinha or Saw you would go for for a Mara's replacement or if there's someone else under 9.8. Definitely um, Rafinha over Saw. I mean, I had the same choice to make last week and I went Rafinha, even though they had Liverpool and Watford had an easy game because uh, Rafinha is fantasy proven. You know, he's a... I think he's the sort of player you can bring him and just leave him there for 10 weeks. Whereas somebody like Sir, I mean, we don't really know yet. I mean, he did okay in the championship. But um, he's, yeah, I don't think he's I'm somewhere... Not, he's, he's not, they're 20 yeah, exactly. chances uh, in exactly. the Prem so far in four weeks. Like, uh, I would not be wanting a Watford attacker personally. As he's crazy he's, as he's not someone you'd want for 10 weeks, is he? As soon as Rafinha scored, he'd want to swap 
to Rafinha. You're Rafinha get has Sarah the option to and so- rise in price the moment he starts hauling. Yeah. Sarah is not going to rise in price like crazy. Rafinha could be the next Ben Rama Antonio in terms of price. He's good. Price. He's, he's good value him. anyway at that price. I mean, before the season started, where everyone was saying that Rafinha was underpriced, he's one of the few players that's cheaper in FPL than they are in fan team. And um, yeah, no, he's a pricey player. He's a good player. Um, what do you think about Amity then? So. Their other option is to kind of, I guess, upgrade Amity to like any defender on the 4.9. And they were thinking Tieni to he could attack keep, that side. He could keep Mares, couldn't he? He could wait and see what um, I guess Southampton Man City's home, champions, right? champion, um, no, see who they pick in the Champions League. Yeah, because if they don't play Mares in the Champions League, Good maybe point. Yeah. Game could be his choice. Um, I think Lego mm. Mane on Twitter, he's a, one of the many predictors of the Pep Roulette. And he actually says that it's easier to guess Pep once the UCL starts up. At least mm. there's another input of data to help us make our decision. So I think, yeah, I mean, Mares, I, w- I wouldn't be rushing to make any transfers, actually. Because you could, he could eventually live Romento, right? Uh, oh, he's got Liv Romento playing away to City. Yeah, yeah. So he got, well, he's got Veltman in here too. I think that was maybe pre-injury, this question. Well, I don't know how... Well, Veltman's not injured. Veltman's not injured. I oh, he's, he's got he's no good. choice. He's got to play Liv Romento because all of the oh, no, I'm thinking of Webster, sorry. I'm thinking of Webster. Players are out. So he's going to have to make one transfer this week. Otherwise, he's pretty stuffed, isn't he? He's got no bench. And um, What's this? Oh, I saw this question yesterday. Oh, yeah, we're on to Bag and Boy sent about 20 questions. We only picked two of them uh, because we feel like you naturally answered some of them in the interview. Yeah, they're all they're all the same, weren't they? <laughs> yeah. Go on, um, um, <laughs> go on, Hibber, read this one. Huh? So, uh, for the for the benefit of our podcast listeners, so uh, Bag and Boy FPL is saying, Nick, you've been playing for a very long time. Um, what drives you? Why do you play FPL? What appeals? You've got the ranks and you've got the fame. Do you have the fame? Like, is this is this a thing? Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, you invited what? me on your program, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. We begged you to come on. Like, I, 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 I was begging made. you to come on. <laughs> but basically, what makes you go on now? Like, once once you've had all this kind of rank and stuff like that, like, why, why do you still play? What's the motivation, basically? Oh, I, I enjoy it. You know, I still enjoy it. The main thing for me is my work, uh, mini league, etc. You know, and the people in real life is uh, at the heart of the game, really, is uh, banter, you know, from that's what it's all about for me. Um, I, just, I just enjoy it. You know, I've, I don't think I could stop playing, to be honest. I'm sort of addicted to it. It's a big part a bit, of our lives, isn't it? Yeah, I get a bit sick of it sometimes, but. Um, Still play it, you know. So there's only one season I didn't finish. That was two years ago, I think. I sort of gave up in April. But um, all the other times I've just carried on. Quite in, quite enjoy it, generally. I enjoy this more season. questions for you, Nick, by the way. So he says ages back on your blog, you said the free for free is the best formation. Do you still stick with that? Or is it that now that there's an onslaught of wing-backs in modern times, you would be willing to go to a back four or a back five? I do always go three four three, and that's probably why I haven't done so well. Maybe the last couple of seasons, because a lot of people have um, spent more in defence. You know, all those years I did good, I had a cheap defence, and uh, I think I didn't get. I was pretty slow on Trent in previous seasons. I tried to ignore him. You know, once his price got high up in the seven, I ignored him, and it kind of um, backfired on me a little bit. But um, I generally don't like spending too much in defence. And uh, especially, yeah, three four three. I like I'm playing it every week so far this season. I think but second half of the season, once you've got more money, I think three five two becomes a much um, more viable. I, think I like that though, you're a man of my heart because both those formations only have three defenders, and that's how I like yeah. to play. I feel like the most upside is in the attacking seven, right? Mm, I think so. even if there's value in the defense, I would still try to mm. punt. I'm a gambling man. I could get steady points if I'm willing to have a 5.5 defender for 38 weeks. But the reality is I'd rather just take the risk and maybe fall short. But there's a small chance that with the right transfers, my seven attackers will outscore that defender. It's a low chance. But if you do it right, there's four top 1K finishes for you right there. The other thing is you've always got... You've got more choice of which what defenders you bench when you've got five of them, haven't you? So you can kind of play the fixtures a bit more. When you've got to play four of them, it's harder to get away from the ones with a bad fixture. 
I have one question okay. for you, Nick. Um, before we go to the live chat, um, there was a question about uh, JWP, uh, so Ward Prowse. They're asking why he's so neglected. I think he's 6.5 million. He's on free kicks. He's on penalties. He's probably the best free kick scorer in the last four or five years in the Premier League. Um, he did get eight goals last year. Now he's on penalties. They're saying surely he'll do better. Um, it just doesn't appeal to me. I, I'll let you give your thoughts, but it does not appeal I don't, to me. I don't know if he would do better. I think that's um, the maximum you're going to get out of him, probably. But um, they haven't had the fixtures yet, have they? So not, none of us have even probably considered the fixtures are around game players. Eight. So if you do a yeah. um, wild card in game week seven or eight, they have some incredible fixtures, I think. Um, he looks know. more appealing in fan team, doesn't he? Because you get points for playing 90 minutes, etc. Apparently he, he always plays does that. He every game of every week of every season. Um, mm. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. No, so I'm Josh, Josh is very, Josh is very big on JWP, isn't he? Isn't he? Yeah. But um, here it yeah. is. By the way, so game week eight is Leeds. Then we've got Burnley, Watford, Villa, Norwich. That's pretty oh, good, isn't it? Five. Yeah, like Armstrong might be interested, man. Armstrong, yeah, so I'm looking at Armstrong for five point five over six point mm. five JWP. Thank he you, six. Armstrong sucks. So he could be a good enabler to That's help great. you get all your Chelsea players in, couldn't he? So He could. Um, I'm going to go to the questions from the live chat because we're at 1 hour 55. We're going to try and let you go in the next 5, 10 minutes. Uh, oh, I'm Nick. quite happy. I'm happy if you guys are. Well, if there's still questions, we're happy. And we'll take you backstage for more questions that are when we talk <laughs> to each other about that whole Scarface background and Rockstar. And I'm sure there's a lot of secret conversations to have after, but I don't want to be disqualified from the football content awards for leaking team news. So... We'll, we'll talk about that later. But um, do you want to pull up? I the saw you question? yesterday. You were going on about people with multiple teams, I think. Yeah, yeah. You, uh... I'm calling out cheaters now. And I'm like, I hope I, they don't I, do my team. My cat here, she's always got, she has her own team. Well, at least she exists, <laughs> right? She, Some people have 13 teams and it's just one guy. Yeah. But, Maybe um, we can I, get your cat to do the captaincy uh, pick one week. So Mariner uh, does a captaincy pick with his cat. I always used to do a few extra teams to um, test out different strategies, etc. You know, like five at the back, or because uh, and normally by Christmas, so they'd be in the bin, you know. But um, seems a bit of a shame not to, you know, involve all your family members sometimes. Yeah, I'm gonna get my wife involved next year. Yeah. My dog. I'm gonna. I'm gonna yeah. get Hibo's best friend from Derry involved. I'm gonna have teams for everyone. Um, we'll let you pull the first question up, Hibo. Yeah, how do I do this again? Put the this three one. fucking uh, right. <laughs> right. So this is actually my cousin. He's saying, "What's the view on bringing in Bamford for Antonio compared to say like Richardson or Hamines? Which which would you prefer, really, out of Bamford, Richardson, or Hamines, and why?" It's got to be Bamford, hasn't it, with the fixtures and uh, Jimenez? There's still a bit of a question mark over him, isn't there? Really, it's, we don't know if he's up to what he was before. I mean. He hasn't done much wrong though, has he really? But Richardson, he like he doesn't have the pains, obviously, because DCL took the pains. He well. doesn't so, appeal. To, money DCL's out now for three well, or four weeks, now, it? it could be an interesting punt. Uh, uh, right. Like I, I do like that, but I think for me, he didn't if you don't have today, Rafinha, he? Bamford is the guy. Like if you don't have Rafinha yeah. and you need to move Antonio, if you cannot bench him. Then I would be going Bamford over him and as all day. Well, I wouldn't even be looking at Richarlison. Um, that just smells too clever to me. Like you're trying too hard. Yes, to I agree. It's being differential for the sake of it, isn't it? I Especially think, when you have. See, when I'm trying to make a transfer, I kind of think, well, what can I get in the first week as well? Like even before, like a good run. And I know Bamford's got a good run, but like Newcastle's just. It's like the best fixture going at the moment. I just think Newcastle are a disgrace. I think like. Who's they're playing them this week? Leeds, Friday night. Oh, on their lights. Oh, it's so, a Friday night kickoff, is uh, that? Yeah. I like them matches. I like them definitely matches. Not I playing, definitely not playing my wild card now. There's no time to bloody sort it out. <laughs> what do you think? Um, I've got a question for you. So, some people have been asking about Edward. They're saying, do you think his minutes depend on Benteke? Um, I think they probably do, but equally, Benteke just signed an extension. From what I hear from Palace fans, he only ever plays well to get contracts. So now that he's got the contract, like maybe Edouard just takes his place. I don't know. Like I wouldn't buy Edouard till he takes the place. But if he takes the place, would you buy Edouard at 6.5? Surely he's going to be first choice. Yeah, we should sure. know by 
we should know by the time Palace get good fixtures. So um yeah, game week eight or nine, we were saying, wasn't we're it? We're by then, so which is good, isn't it? We will. Someone is asking how they can show their team and they're thinking about wildcarding. If you tweet any of the three of us now, while we're still live on air, we will reply about whether we think you should wildcard or not, Max Walters. So just send us a tweet or reply to the pinned tweet on at net, that whole Twitter. In the meantime, I'm going to go to a friend of the show, Mike Halpin. Um, he's asking about wildcard too. It feels like wildcard is very topical with uh, the DCL injury in the Antonio Red card. Um, he has Tony, DCL, and Antonio. That feels kind of rough. Um, he's asking, should he take a hit to sell Bruno and DCL to get Lukaku plus a midfielder? Or should he just wildcard to sort out that front three? What do you think? It's difficult, isn't it? Um, it's difficult, actually, for people taking out Antonio and getting another mid price striker in. Because in a couple of weeks, they're going to have to get Lukaku anyway, aren't they? So... I think there is a case for getting Lukaku in now, really, if you're going to be doing it in two weeks anyway. I know they've got bad fixtures, but there's no reason why well, Lukaku Tottenham, can't Tottenham score. Are missing defenders, right? Um, yeah, exactly. There's no reason why Lukaku can't score in that game, is there? And, okay, you won't captain him against City either, but I don't know. No, like, but he like, can score. I mean, they've beaten City the last two times they've played them, haven't they? Hmm. Well, he has also said he could take a minus eight. And swap Tony for Bamford, so he could kind of uh, sell. I guess. Uh, what was he saying? He, saying he, sell, he was saying he could sell Calvert Lewin, Tony, and Bruno for it's a minus eight. Too late to get Greenwood now, isn't it? I, 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 think so. I agree. I think so. Um, I asked they would sell Tony this week before. Like I think Wolves isn't a bad fixture for Tony. I'm happy to hold him. I think. I know I'm he hasn't. Old. Really, I know. I know he hasn't really done it. But like, it's not one. Like I look at my team and well, think, who am I going to buy? In Dubai? That's the other thing. Like you could sell him, but who are you going to replace him with? Jimenez. I don't really want Jimenez because I don't think he's the same player. If I'm being totally honest with you, like it's, it's, it seems to be. It seems to be operating more as a kind of a, a support role. I think he's not. He's not what he was. Like so, I don't know. He doesn't seem to have had that many chances, does he? It was from what I've seen of the highlight. Though. So he had 12 shots, but only one of them was on target. Oh, really? That's not very good, is it? <laughs> the rest, yeah, yeah, it does not look great. Um, out of interest, um, there was, um, I just want to say hi to Gary Swan at FPL Chess. He had sent a question as well. Um, well, he, had, he just said hi. All this time, I didn't realize Gary Swan was FPL Chess. I thought it were two different people based on YouTube live stream and Twitter questions, but I just thought I'd say hi to him. And, so Anthony, your cousin, is saying Bamford Friday night hat trick. It is then. Oh, hundred percent. I've got him. Well, this guy. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I will get him. I think I will get him if he's playing Newcastle. All right. <laughs> I mean, Newcastle. Why not? I, they've got this boy Woodman and Nets, and I, I don't think I've seen a worse keeper because he should have kept out those two goals from Ronaldo. He basically just palmed it out to Ronaldo at the weekend. Maybe so, he had money on the line. It's not impossible. Like. No, yes, by the way, Mr. Ali, I just want to bring this up. Mr. Right Ali. In the first half, but... So, Mr. Ali, I think the first question is a troll because he says, where's Lacazette? Minus four for Oba. So, uh, like, I'm glad he, like he's thinking about Arsenal players, so I won't be rude to him about that. But, uh, like, I don't know. Like, Oba is a person who is, I think in 10 years, this is the first time he's under 10 million in any fantasy game. So, in his price drop recently, they dropped it to like 9.9, 9.8, wherever he is. He's never been this cheap in fantasy football. Um, in 10 years, he's scored less than 20 goals once. That was last year. People were so quick to write him off. Um, I remember Kane for like two years was struggling to get 10 goals in the Prem after he kept getting rushed back from perennial ankle injuries. No one said that he was done. Maybe if Oba can find his form, um, he is a great pick. Why you have Lacazette, I don't know, because that's my other question is like, like Lacazette has not even been starting, so I'll be yeah, back in a sec. Yeah, yeah, you go for it. But Hibo, is that not like I don't know, like Lacazette? I, I don't know why he has Lacazette. But if you're in this situation, I would not be taking a minus four for Obo. If I'm taking a minus four, it's to move to a Lukaku or Ronaldo. Like this isn't this isn't a serious question. But he has another no, question, which is he also has no Calvert Lewin. No, but he also has Calvert Lewin, and he's asking to go to Saint Maximan. So either he's just taking the piss both times, or. He has a differential team. And I just kind of thought, you know what? There are possibilities that some of our viewers just play for fun and have the team they want. And they're not following that Twitter herd. Maybe these are real questions. I don't know. So I thought we'd ask them just in case. I play for fun, but it's kind of more fun than one, do you not think? 
It is more fun. To... <laughs> I'm sorry, Ali. I mean, a Bamiyang is a blimmin', He's an awkward, awkward price, isn't he? He couldn't own a Bama Yang. He couldn't I own would not. Magnus Carlsen brought him in, didn't he? This way. It's positive. What happened to your cat's team? Did it captain Lacazette or did it cap did it not? To my cat's team. Yeah. Not this not this way. It hasn't got Lacazette. Oh. <laughs> but um Lacazette's actually always at the top of the stats, isn't he? But he never he never actually plays. So, so. That's the problem. He's got a great like record, his conversion record, yeah. rate, etc. is really good. I, I him, yeah, but he's, he's got what's he doing? He's top six. I, I don't understand what he's doing. I mean, he never played. Why doesn't he move to somewhere where he can play? I think no one will pay. Basically, Arsenal paid a lot of players a lot. Oh, of is that wages, what it is? And no he's one will pay for them. Yeah, yeah, they're all doing an Ozil, all of them. Um, yeah. Kalasinaj, Mustafi, even the most average players, they're all doing the same. Um, so we've got a couple of final questions for you, Nick, before we go. So Max Walters, he's asking, what two, uh, what two keepers should he take? And he's given a list of keepers he likes. Um, so he's asked for Gator, Raya, Ramsdale, Leno, Backman, Foster. Well, Leno is not even playing, is he? I know him and Ramsdale is a complicated question. Um, yeah, you can't. Is, yeah. yeah, I wouldn't go for either. Um, I wouldn't go close. Uh, How much is Ramsdale? Is he four, four and a half? Five, yeah. It's is he? Good. It is good, but I don't trust it yet. Like, I don't think. Well, I think I do. I, I I think he'd be number one now, wouldn't he? I don't know. So what I will say is, Leno. Um, different newspapers have said he's finishing his contract next year versus the following year. The reality is, he signed a five-year contract in 2018, so I'm pretty sure his two-year contract still left. He may I think be gone, Ramsdale will be playing. But Ra so Ramsdale's better for the team. I was there. I watched it live. He felt very assured. The fans mm. connected with him, but one or two mistakes. I think Leno takes Ramsdale's spot, and that's what I don't like. So I feel like they are competing genuinely, and I thought Ramsdale would have the number one spot by December, January. Leno came back from international duty, so um, Neuer wasn't around, Testagum was out. I hear one of the reasons Ramsdale started was because, like, essentially Leno had complications coming back from uh, the international uh -huh. game. So that does worry me, just knowing that. And I love Ramsdale. He looked great. I watched him live, but he, he takes up an Arsenal up. spot as well, didn't he? It's I mean, you never know. You might you might want three Arsenal outfielders at some stage. It's hard to, <laughs> it's hard to imagine now. now. People laugh now, but maybe you want Tierney or Burton. You never Saka. know. People exactly. are going to be crying when they can't get to that. The defenders are good. So I'm crying the, defender, for folks the goalkeeper. <laughs> so wait, if we could pick two goalkeepers. So I think we agree that it's probably not Leno. If you think but Foster Ramsdale doesn't, spot, Foster doesn't could. play anyway, does he? But but I guess that would be their second keeper, right? I think it'll be your man Raya when the fixtures get good. I so think Raya he... and Foster or Raya? I think Brentford. And... I, from what I well, Raya or maybe Gaeta because I think yeah. both are both are kind of conceding a lot of shots from outside the box. From what I see, and they're like low XG shots. You make a lot of saves off that kind of shit. So I, I think those, those two potentially appeal to me, Gaeta and Raya. And when you're looking at Palace, they're looking better defensively than what they were. And like these signings, are, they look good. They look more sought. I think when the fixtures get good for four and a half, it could be all right. Backman's been disappointing, hasn't he? I mean, I've got him in a lot of my fan teams and I'm trying to get rid of him because he's, he's hopeless. Just no, not I impressed think, at I, all. I think he's been very disappointing. You're right. Mm. On that note, uh, Nick, so I don't know if you've got any kind of like deep burning thoughts you want to get out for game week five or just in general about what we discussed about your top 1K finishes of Fordham. But I feel like we've kept you for so long, two hours, eight minutes. We still want to interrogate you backstage too and tell you some of the secrets. So let's, I think we've got through all oh, the questions good. on the live as long as, they're not, as long as they're not recorded, I don't want them coming back to home. Exactly. No, no, no. That's why I'm saying. So <laughs> unless you've got any deep burning desires to chat, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the music stomp. I'm going to get us out of here. I might actually play Bacar's Dance just one last time because I uploaded this when he came on the show. So I think I'm just going to play Bacar's Dance as our stomp out of the show. But Nick, um, stay on. I'm going to just close this off. Mark, you know. Thank you for anyone who's Mark. been here tonight. We've enjoyed having you along. And do hit that like and subscribe. If you're on podcast, do leave a review if you're on iTunes or an Apple device. But otherwise, thank you all for joining. Yeah. We will talk to you soon. And Nick, do you have any final thoughts before we go? Yeah. Check out my stream, people. My uh, you Get in my uh, 
click on my Twitter and there's a link in there. And so we'll uh, send I'll, be the doing link. A, I'll be doing a few um, streams this week, I think, regarding whether I'm wildcarding or not, et cetera, and what to do with Calvert-Lewin and um, Antonio. And we'll see what happens, basically. Until then, peeps, I'll uh, talk to you all later. <laughs> So <laughs> at Nick Trigger Lips, if you don't already follow on Twitter, and we'll be sending a link to Nick's Twitter and YouTube for any of the podcast listeners. Just check the uh, description of the podcast or YouTube channel. In the meantime, I'm going to show Bukar's dance because I've already embarrassed myself. So I know my brother Bukar is in here, but I'm going to do a little dance with him for the end of the night with my few beers. <laughs> Oh, my God.